the Pac-12, leading the nation with over 500 NCAA championships. On this St. Patrick's Day, we are at Jackie Robinson Stadium in West Los Angeles for the final chapter in this opening weekend of conference play between the number one ranked Oregon State Beavers and number three UCLA. Game of the week presented by Opus Bank. Well, last night things were going the way for Oregon State. And it all started with the junior out of Oregon, Adley Rutschman. Rutschman two for three last night, knocked in three of Oregon State's seven runs on a six game hitting streak right now for the Beavers. And he had some help as Oregon State's pitching was pretty dominant. The other junior, Brandon Iser, four and two thirds innings, gave up only three hits, 10 strikeouts for Iser on the evening. Considered the third best pitcher in the nation. Well, good afternoon on a hot and scorching day here in Los Angeles. Ted Umberg alongside Hall of Famer and national champion Wes Clemens. Well, we're pleased to have you with us. The game three decider on the line today. Well, it really is. But it, it, listen, if you're around a TV, drop an anchor for about four hours. This is big time college baseball. Two of the best programs, not only this year in college baseball, but ever in the history of college baseball. No doubt about that. Well, let's talk about Adley Rutschman because he was a force to be reckoned with last night. Well, he really was, but it didn't surprise anybody. I mean, this young man, I call him the Andrew Luck of college baseball. Why do I say that? You guys remember when Andrew Luck was up at Stanford, he was a can't-miss prospect as a quarterback, and Andrew Luck has been that in the NFL, and this is what I believe Adley Rutschman is in college baseball. I mean, he sits a sensational baseball player, a super young man, and in my opinion, he can't miss. Okay? Well, what about Brandon Iser? Because he was dominant, a new career high, 10 strikeouts last night. Well, listen, Brandon was sensational last year in the College World Series, and last night, the Beavers relied on him in a must-win situation for them, and boy, did he not disappoint. Oh, he certainly did. Well, uh, the game three today, the series decider, what do you expect from UCLA? They took Oregon State in the shutout Friday night, eight nothing. Well, they really did. Listen, this is a big time game, obviously, but it's not a, a make or break for either club. Listen, one is playing three. It's just going to be great baseball. Don't go anywhere. Oregon State and UCLA first pitch right around the corner, presented by Opus Bank. Next on Pac-12 Networks. Well, baseball is presented by Opus Bank, the official bank of the Pac-12 Conference. By Rawlings, champions choose Rawlings. And by State Farm, here to help life go right. Welcome to UCLA. What a gorgeous afternoon for baseball. Game three on the line to start off the conference play of 2019, 83 degrees on this fantastic St. Patrick's Day. Wes Clements and Ted Emberg here with you as we go through the lineup first for Oregon State. Interim head coach Pat Bailey in his first year has it laid out like this. Meckler, McGarry, Rutschman, Philip Malone, Fuchs. Then the bottom third, Ryan Ober, Mendezona, and Joe Casey rounding it out. Now those Beavers will be facing the freshman pitcher Jesse Bergen. Well, Jesse, up until his last outing at Dodger Stadium a couple weekends ago against Crosstown rival USC had been perfect, basically. Sensational. You see his numbers right there, 225 ERA, 20 innings, only five walks, and then you see the 23 punch outs. Um, he's got a decent fastball, 91-92. He's got a fastball change up and a slider. And the defense backing up Bergen this afternoon is going to be Looking like this, left to right in the outfield, Stronic, McLean, Mitchell, Ryan Kreidler on third, and Michael Tolia stationed on first, Kevin Kendall, and shortstop Chase Strump on second. Behind the plate, Will McInerney. He'll be laying down the signs and getting the feed from the dugout for the freshman Bergen. Well, you see McLean in center field there, and Mitchell hard pressed to find two faster in an outfield in the country. 
UCLA coming into this game 13 and 4. Last night snapped the four game win streak that UCLA had going. You see John Savage there picking up his 500th win Friday night in the 8 nothing shutout. Yeah, we're messing with that. I was messing with them, not you, but before the game, uh, I've been around John a long time and <laughs> I said, hey, you know, 500 wins just means you're old. Right? Um, you know, of course, we're joking with him. I mean, listen, he's one of the best in the country. Since he's taken over this UCLA program, it's gone upwards and upwards and upwards. Tremendous head coach. One of the top teams in the Pac-12 does a fantastic job of recruiting top talent every single season. So our first batter for Oregon State is Wade Meckler. He climbs in. A freshman studying finance at Oregon State. Today's first pitch. Inside for a strike, and we're underway. Today's umpire, Will Van Raphorst, behind the dish. Everyone moved up a position. Ryan Goodman down first. Jeffrey Henricks at second. And then Mike Lusky, who was behind the dish last night on third. And Meckler opens up the game with two strikes. Which would mean they rotate, rotate clockwise, correct? Lusky on third today, so yes. You had to think about that, didn't I you? I did. Okay. You know what I mean. <laughs> Swing and a miss into the mitt of McInerney. And Bergen retires Meckler. Well, I tell you what, it, you guys weren't there at Dodger Stadium at the Dodger Classic when Bergen faced crossed on rival USC Trojans. During that game, his first pitch at Dodger Stadium to Sable, leading off for the, the Trojans, you were there. He left the yard. So much better than his last outing already. Punch out number one for Bergen to start off the game. This is his fifth start so far this season. This pitch is a fly ball. It's going to trail out of play. Near that red truck out there that you were talking about last night's broadcast. Not the red truck, the red, the red sedan. Sedan, okay. Is that the right word for that car? So tell us about that. Well, I did, listen, I, I be remiss if we didn't mention it, but I forgot his name because I didn't go out there and talk to him this year. But William Board, the liter literally, I just remembered his name. It's pretty good. <laughs> but anyway. The gentleman that sits in that red car has been doing that, uh, doing this, his job, for decades. Okay. And you know what he does? He gets all the foul balls and he gets all the home runs, and I'm talking about from BP all the way. Fly ball deep to right field. One run shot from Alex McGarry, his third home run of the season, and just like that, Oregon stayed on top early, one to nothing. Well, I, I talked about last week. Bergen's first hitter that he faced left a yard, Sable, and now his second hitter this week leaves a yard to McGarry. And don't forget, McGarry tied the game up with a blast to right field last night. So just like that, the Beavers are on top. And watch this. We're going to get a look at the pitch. It's just a fastball right down Broadway. And pitchers know. I mean, McGarry, he is put together. And last night he said he didn't know. He wasn't sure if it was going out. He was sure. McGarry belted the home run in the seventh inning last night. So Bergen on the mound for UCLA takes care of Meckler with his first punch out. And then McGarry with the home run. And now here's Adley Rutschman, the dangerous Rutschman. Well, <laughs> listen, just sit back and watch. You want to watch a, a complete baseball player and arguably the best hitter in the entire country? Just watch this man hit. First team All-American in his junior season. Batting 423. <laughs> Yeah, he's sitting over 500 with runners in scoring position. And the longer this season goes, the deeper we get in Pac-12 Pac play, uh, the less opportunities opposition is going to give him to hit. And what I mean by that, if you're facing Rutschman, and there will be situations where there will be runners at first and second, and I'll guarantee you uh, a manager is going to put him on to load the bases. That's how good he is. Well, why is Bergen even pitching to Rutschman? Well, he's pitching outside. Is he trying to get something that he'll nibble on? Well, yeah, that's exactly what he's trying to do. I mean, it's three and one right now. The listen, the one thing the pitchers do and know, they know who they're going to face that day. And everybody knows who Rutschman is. He's a guy with a 608 on base percentage. 
22 hits on the season. He has walked 26 times. Three and one. And there's a strike from Bergen. So you got to remember something. The, the Beavers came in to this series hitting about 260 as a team. Rutschman's hitting well over 400. So you just put the numbers together and you understand this guy here is the most dangerous hitter in the on the Beavers lineup. Payoff pitch, one out. Fly ball, center field. Matt McClain on his horse back near the wall. Has the distance. See you later. Touch them all. That ball left the ballpark. Back-to-back -back home runs for Oregon State. It's Rutschman's seventh of the season. I mean, listen, how many more superlatives can I talk about this young man and say? Folks, this is dead central field in Westwood. Yes, it's, a, it's 80 degrees today, but you're hard-pressed to find balls that go this far at this yard over the monster. And it's just you just leave it there. But like you were talking about, Teddy, that's why. That's why in a lineup that is hitting 260 as a team, not to take anything away from the rest of the lineup, the eight hitters, but that guy there, you're better off letting him go to first base on his own. And that the, the rest of the line, he's the only one hitting 400. So what's the thinking about that? You have a freshman on the mound for UCLA pitching to one of the top players top prospects in the nation well there's a lot going on now this is different than pro ball and, uh, and i'll tell you why number one this is the third game of pac-12 play john savage is, is relying on bergen this year to be a reliable starter his sunday starter you cannot initially tell pitchers that come in that didn't, no matter if they're freshmen senior it doesn't matter what year they are you can't get them in a mindset to not pitch to somebody. You want them to go at, at hitters. You want them, now later in the season, when the games start to mean, when you know that this win is gonna mean this, now you start thinking different, but you gotta get their feet wet. You have to see their best stuff up against somebody like a Rutschman. But you can't take that competitiveness away from a freshman. So a rocky start for Bergen. Punches out Meckler to start the game. Back-to-back -back home runs from McGarry and Rutschman. Oregon State up 2-0, and this has sliced into right field. Garrett Mitchell striding to his left near the line and collects it for round number two. But these pitches that left the yard from McGarry and Rutschman, they're supposed to leave the yard based on where they were located in the strike zone. They're just right down the middle to two, two guys that have some good bat speed. And that one from Rutschman. Monster. Mm -hmm. Here's Tyler Malone. Takes a first pitch breaking ball in for a strike. Malone, a junior, Pac-12 All-Academic honorable mention last season, batting 214 right now in the year. Both teams even in the all-time series with 39 wins each. Series split up right now. UCLA took Friday night's game, 8-0. Oregon State came back last night and won 7-3. Now off to a 2-0 lead in the first. 0-2. Oh, Chopper down first, handled by Tolia. He'll give the soft toss over to Bergen. And just like that, Oregon State up by two. Well, I tell you what, it's Sunday. Winner takes the series, and just like that, the Beavers, two solos, McGarry, and then most Rutschman, 2 nothing. Welcome back to Sunday Baseball, presented by Opus Bank for our game of the week. S series split, one and one, game three on the line. Oregon State off to an early 2 nothing lead, two home runs in the first.
Now we take a look at John Savage's lineup today for UCLA. Mitchell, Silva, and Strumpf. Then middle third is Stronach, Kreidler, Tolia, McLean, Kendall, and McInerney rounding out the Bruins lineup this afternoon. Now the Bruins will be facing the senior, number 12, Sam Tweet. Well, Sam has always had a big time arm for the Beavers. He's just, he's been in that bullpen and now they're gonna put him on the mound and start a Sunday game. He's got, again, he's got a power arm and he mixes in a fastball and a, a slider along with a changeup. Tweet making his fifth start this year. One on one record, 2.25 earned run averages. Pitched 20 innings, 19 strikeouts. Here, Mitchell, the first batter for UCLA, working from behind this afternoon. Here's the sophomore Mitchell, takes the first pitch, pops it up. Shielding is Phillip and called off by Meckler. And Meckler can't locate. And Mitchell now on second. A burning sun, a factor. Well, this is what happens in a day game. It's Sunday here, and you mentioned the sunshine. You, you see him coming in, and he just flat out loses it. And, and I will say this. There is a big difference. There's some shades that outfielders can wear, the kind that you flip down, right? And it makes a big-time difference. They don't use them very much in college. All the players now, they just have the shades on to start with. But it, it, it's you have to get to one side of the sun and what I mean by if you see the sun right at you Just get to one side if you're an outfielder and you have to kind of round it Meckler working with shades down on that still couldn't locate so Now Mitchell in scoring position. Here's Silva Showing butt We're gonna get another look at the sun ball here and again, for those you don't know, Garrett Mitchell, one of the fastest in the country, but this right here is not a good position to be in. Everybody's been there if you've ever played baseball. Mitchell with the leadoff double. Silva and the DH today, batting 44. Not showing bunt there, it takes a strike. Well, right off the bat, Silva's right now is to, is to hit the ball to the right side. If he gets a hit, it's a bonus. But at minimum, he needs to Mitchell over to third base. Only nine at bats this season. This is his tenth of the year. This is a hard breaking ball from Tweet. Get a look at it here. It's with the on deck hitter. So that's exactly what he looks at. And he's like, don't do that. Baby. I hope you don't. Bounce before the plate. Oregon native checks second. Tweet delivers home and another bounce one. And stopped by Rutschman. Well, we've talked about Rutschman as a hitter. Yep. And there you get a good example of why he's the number one prospect as a catcher. I mean, everything he did to watch this, folks, the idea of a catcher, once the ball's down, is to make your stomach literally like a pillow. So the ball will bounce not too far from you. And there you see it textbook by Rutschman. You can do it all on both sides. Two and two to Silva. Mitchell on second, no outs. And this will be sliced into center field. Casey there. And Mitchell's going to head to third. And he'll arrive. So let's take a look at our defense backing up Sam Tweet this afternoon, presented by Opus Bank. We have Wade Meckler, Joe Casey, Tyler Malone left to right in the outfield. Mendezona on third with Phillip at short. Over on second, McGarry on first. Rutschman, of course, behind the plate, laying down the, the senior tweet. Now the Beavers uh, had to replace three first-round draft picks. And Trevor Larnick, who used to play right field, and then Nicky Madrigal at second base, and then Caden Grin Grinier at shortstop. First pitch to Strump fouled away. 
You may with the runner 90 feet away. You may ask me why it's important for the Bruins to get this point on the board here in the first inning. And by the way, I understand it, their runs, but uh, Tell point, point well, just because the Beavers put two on the board in the first inning. Very, very important for the Bruins to at minimum get this run on the board. And because both these teams are some of the top pitching colleges in the nation. Oregon State currently ranking eighth nationally in ERA. Seven spots higher than UCLA. Check swing. That's close. Ball on a strike to the junior Strumpf. Batting 279. Looking for his 20th hit. Oregon State shaded towards third on the infield. Right side of the infield wide open for Strumpf's liking. Mitchell down third, 1-1. A bit low. Chase is preseason All-American. I mean, he has not hit where we know he can as far as average and run production, but he's the guy you want up now because he understands the situation and normally Chase is hitting the ball up the middle, gap to gap, and that's what you need here to get that run. Upstairs, three and one. Now this is where as a hitter, if you're a youngster out there in high school watching this game, when you get a 3-1 count, you know what you need to think of as a hitter is I'm going to get a base hit. Not a home run, not a double, not anything. You work your tail off to get to this count. If a fastball's coming, just don't pop it up and hit a line drive somewhere. Which is something you don't see in the uh, big leagues. Everyone's swinging for the fences. Don't even remote. Uh, it, you know what? In the defense of the hitters, yeah. it's not their fault. That's what they're being told to do. Right. And it's shame on the organizations that doing that. I mean, uh, uh, whatever. We, we know you're not a fan of the analytics. It's not so much the analytics. Listen, we've always had analytics. They just were called statistics. It's the mindset. 3-2. That's ball Good. four. Runners Ted. on the corners. Excuse me, Ted, but that is a great, great take from a preseason All-American. I mean, folks, that's a great, great pitch by Tweed. It's a 3-2 nasty changeup. And it's and trust me, that's a nasty changeup from somebody that throws about 93. And watch Chase. Real good at bat right there. Walk just as good as a hit. Runners on first and third now. And I'll bring up the four hole hitter, Stronic. Do you know how many Little League coaches used to say that? What? Walks is just as good as a hit. Maybe that's where I got it from. Well, possibly. But I it was a strong. while ago, but. Not that long. <laughs> <laughs> Not as long as you. But. I didn't. Well, you know what? I didn't play baseball in high school. Not one inning. Did you know that? No. Why not? Because I played basketball and golf. Stronic batting 429. Rifles this one into right field. It's going to land for a base hit, and a run comes home. Garrett Mitchell plating the run 2-1. Well, that's good stuff from the Bruins. They bounce right back after the Beavers take a 2 0 lead. And then Strunick jumps on this fastball and hits it right down the right field line, which allows Mitchell to score from third. And just like that, the Bruins said, you know what? You're in our house. We're pretty good this year, too. Let's play some baseball. They cut the lead in half with room for more. You have Strumpf now in scoring position and Strunick on first, bringing up Brian Kreibler. Kreibler can do some damage. Three home runs on the season. 23 hits, hitting 365. One out. First pitch. Down low. Yeah, Kreis has always been a top prospect. Once, once he came out of uh, high school, both him and Strump, Tolia all came here, much heralded out of high school, and Kreidler struggled a little bit early last year, but he put it together from 
a hitting standpoint and defensively at third base and he has just continued as the season has started. He's getting himself in a mess right here because these are hitters that you do not want to fall behind. Speaking of Strump, Stronach, Kreidler, Tolia. You want to face them when they know a fastball is coming. Tweet out of the stretch, check second. Two runners on for UCLA, and that's fouled out of play. You talk about it. Beautiful day, though. What'd you say in the open? You said it was scorcher? Yeah, 83 degrees. Where are you? But I thought you lived in Southern California. I mean, I lived up in San Francisco, and now I live down. Well, if you lived in San Francisco, I mean, this would be a I scorcher mean, for you. Yeah. It's 83 degrees. It's just beautiful. Again, as a hitter, this is where you got to have in your mindset. I always used to think 3-1 counts when I knew a fastball was coming. First thing I thought is don't pop this up. Because a lot of times subconsciously you'll try to lift because you know a fastball is coming. Just put a base hit swing on this. This is line in a right center field. It's going to fall. Rounding third is going to be struck. Picked up in center by Casey. And it's two each. Well, you're seeing the maturation of a junior, Kreidler. He has been on fire since the season has started. And he takes a 3-1 pitch and hits the ball to right center to tie this game up. And just like that, the Bruins have first and third. And Kreidler has set it up for his buddy Tolia. But this is the offense that we talked about. The Bruins have always had pitchers throughout John Savage's career here, but this is the lineup, arguably the best that the Bruins have had, top to bottom, for over a decade. Tweet has faced five Bruins batters, three of the five collecting hits, started with Garrett Mitchell's double that Meckler couldn't locate in the sun. Now here's Tolia. Stronach down third, Kreidler on first. The Michael has started this, this season slow. Everybody has seen Michael in his career at UCLA. He's a can't-miss prospect. Doesn't mean he has to be a first-round draft pick. When he gets to the next level, he's going to produce. 227 batter this season. Upstairs. This is a good trip. This is a good trip. Nate, yes, he's going to go out there and talk to him with Rutschman and just, hey, just calm him down. Remind him it's the first inning. Get the ball down. You've been successful your whole career. And let it go. A lot of times pitchers get in situations like this, Ted, where they'll try to aim the ball. They'll try to be so perfect because... Again, when you look at this lineup, it's not the batting average that, that, that they have right now, but all these pitchers know Mitchell and Silva and, and Trump and Stronach and Kreidler and Tolia. They understand who these guys are. They're big-time talents offensively that the Bruins have. And, and there, are, there are times, actually, he's going to leave the game. Yeah, we have Christian Chamberlain, the other South Paul for Oregon State, is going to come in. Chamberlain just as dangerous. So a new pitcher for Oregon State will step aside, tie a ball game, UCLA threatening with runners on first and third back after this. A lot of offensive action early in this opening frame. We're all knotted up, two each. And uh, it all happened in Vegas, and now it's time to brace for the madness that lies ahead. Tune to Pac-12 Network today at 5 o'clock for the inside Pac-12 basketball men's selection show and Monday at 6 for the women's selection show. And download and stream each show live wherever you might be with Pac-12 now.
pitcher coming in for Oregon State. Here's the southpaw, Christian Chamberlain, sophomore out of Reno, Nevada. And man, did he have an impressive College World Series appearance. Well, he did, and he was a freshman, and he basically came out of the Beavers' bullpen in Omaha last year and surprised everybody, and he was spectacular, folks, in Omaha. But just like that first inning. Now, some might say, well, you know what? It's kind of awkward that you take your starter out after one out, but this is something that the Beavers, Pat Bailey head coach, and then Nate Yeske, one of the best pitching coaches in the entire country, talked about before the game even started is that number one they want to win this series deciding game today but they know who they have available on their staff and they I guarantee you the prior to this game because he wasn't injured or the trainer when it came out speaking of of tweet this is just a, something a plan they did before the game if he gets in trouble early we're going to Chamberlain runners on first and third here's Tolia kind of interesting I, I haven't seen this yet where they flip totally around in the same at bat. He's a switch hitter, folks. First two pitches he saw from the left side. Now they flipped him around. Stronach down third. Kreidler on first. One out. 2-1 to Tolia. Good fastball. He's just got a good arm, folks. And this is exactly what he did in Omaha. 3-0 last year. Had a 3.54 earned run average in 20 appearances. He's not big, but he's got a big arm. And he paints that outside corner perfectly. <laughs> Full count now to Tolia. Pat Bailey taking over for an icon. That took over for Pat Casey, the three-time champion. He was an assistant coach at Oregon State for 11 years. Off to a pretty good start, 14-2 and two right now for Oregon State. Big shoes to fill, but really good choice to fill them in Pat. Pat Bailey big on... The benefits of hard work and teamwork. No nonsense guy. 3 2, ground ball left side. Phillip can't handle it. Another run comes across. And UCLA up 3 to 2. Couple of issues there on that left side from Phillip. Well, Listen, this is an in-betweener, and what I mean by that, watch where this ball just takes a hop. And again, not all hops are perfect out there. I mean, uh, this play, this ball has got some top spin on it. And that top spin is going to take funny hops out there, and it just takes a funny hop for Phillip. Kangaroo hop on him. He'll get charged with the error. And it's 3-2 to two UCLA. Kreiler advancing the second. Tolion first. Here's McLean. That's a nice breaking ball. McLean, number one draft pick of the Diamondbacks. A lot of people surprised that the uh, D-backs did not sign him. And, and ideally for a number one pick, if you're a, a major league organization, you draft somebody number one, you draft them to sign him. And it, it's interesting how they did not sign him. I mean, it's it's a wasted number one draft pick. Soft fly ball in the left field. Falls in for McLean. Rounding third is Stronic. Gets cut off. 42 UCLA. McLean delivers. Well, he didn't hit it hard, but this is a baby core back. And what I mean by that is that if this was a wooden bat, it probably would have broke his back. But his hands were quick enough to get enough of the barrel on this ball and just feather it in the left field and put the Bruins ahead. UCLA taking advantage of the Beavers pitching early on. 
Oregon State came out with back to back home runs, 2 0. And then UCLA in this inning has put up four runs. Great block there by Rutschman. But you got to remember how this inning starts, started, folks. The sun ball and left. The little gap wedge between Phillip and Meckler in left field, and that's how this inning started. And Silva flied out to center. Strumpf walked. Stronick with the single to right, knocking in a run. Then Kreider with the RBI single. Tolia arrives and scores a run on the error, charged on Phillip. You know, the one thing about Kendall, who is hitting right now, is that last year as a freshman, the thing that impressed me the most and how why I thought the Bruins had somebody is that when he faced left handed pitchers, he doesn't even flinch, folks. It doesn't phase him one bit. And I remember going down to John Savage the next day and I said, I tell you what, this guy is going to be a hitter and a player. Bells it off, same location. But normally a left-hand hitter facing a left-hand pitcher, they'll have some different tendencies. You can see a lot of times they'll get a little rubber front leg on breaking balls, but it doesn't happen for Kendall. Sophomore with seven hits on the season. He's batting 171. Chance for some extra runs for UCLA with runners on first and second. Just one out. One, two. It's a high chopper up the middle. Quick toss over to second, but safe is Matt McClain. And now the base is loaded with one out. Brings up McInerney. Well, with McLean on first base, and listen, when you play defense, Ober has to know he's at, at first base, and McLean can absolutely fly. The only thing Ober could have done differently there is just read that ball better and come and get that hop. And don't, because that, that hop, the last hop is what made McLean safe. Right now, if Ober can somehow, you see how he went back there a little bit? If he just comes to that ball and runs through the bag, he gets McLean, but that extra step back to field that ball is what made McLean safe at second base. So now a huge opportunity for UCLA. Here in game three, Will McInerney, the catcher on the 1 0. Bases loaded, just one out. Will's father, Danny, played up at Cal. Actually played against his father. Really? Yeah. So they're going to mark that a base hit for Kevin Kendall. Well, they have to. But um, from a mental standpoint, it was a mental error. From Ober, in my opinion. UCLA banging on the door, and now three and one to McInerney. There's now, no room to put him. Well, again, how many three-one counts have hitters had, Teddy, this first inning? John Savage is he's in the catbird seat right there, right? Got to like your situation. It looks pretty mellowed out. Four-two, three-one count, bases loaded. McInerney, soft ground ball, left side, fielded by Phillip. There's one, the relay over to first, but safe. Another run will score for UCLA, make it 5-2. to two. Well, I tell you what, I just mentioned that, that, that McInerney's father, Danny, played up at Cal, and I, I busted his chops last year, and I said, you know what, your son's faster than you were. And that's a pretty good example right there. I mean, Danny's, a, his son is a catcher, Will is the catcher, and he got down that line. Watch him get down this line. This ball is hit hard enough to turn a normally a 6-4-3 double play, but watch him. He can get down that line. And his hustle right there allowed the Bruins to put the fifth run on the board in the first inning. Tolia plates the run. And now we're at the top of the lineup again for UCLA.
Mitchell started the inning off with that soft double in the left field that Phillip and Short and Meckler were trying to figure out who has it. Well, I tell you what, in this situation here, facing the left-hand pitcher, and on a 1-1 count, with Mitchell's speed, normally you would never think of this. First and third, you want the hitter hitting with two outs. But with the left-hand pitcher, Chamberlain, on the mound, he's going to fall off towards third base. The runner being held at first, if Mitchell just gets the ball bunted on the grass towards first, it's another run and ends up being first and second. Bruins up by three, bottom of the first inning. A lot of offensive production from both of these teams. Last night, both kind of started slow. Morgan State made a late surge. Really hit the gas pedal on the business end of last night's matchup. McLean down third, McInerney on first. Two outs, one-two count for Garrett Mitchell. First time he's facing Chamberlain, Sam Tweet was the first pitcher that Mitchell saw. <laughs> and after facing five batters for Tweet, they sent in Christian Chamberlain. Two. Breaking balls high, full count. Well, they're playing behind McInerney at first base. That puts a lot more pressure on the infield if Mitchell hits one on the on the ground. Because the play most likely would have to be made at first. Swing and a miss into the glove of Adley Rutschman. Chamberlain gets out of the inning without any more damage. UCLA up by three. They get punched in the face, down 2-0. They come back and produce five runs. Oregon State off to a good start, put up two runs in the first inning, back-to-back -back home runs, but then UCLA comes back, and they answer with five. Now, five runs, the most they put up in the first inning at all this entire season. Now, well, it's a big-time answer. Excuse me, Teddy, but it's a big-time answer. And you understand why the Bruins are, are ranked third in the entire country. I mean, not very many clubs are going to come back on Oregon State just like that and put up a five spot. But, you know, I can't tell you enough about this Bruins offense, the potential of this Bruins offense uh, this year and this season is unlimited. Now the freshman Bergen's going back to work, trying to hold UCLA out in front. A couple of lead changes last night. You saw a pretty scrappy game, both teams fighting hard. Well, last you may remember last night, the Bruins from Ralston all the way through, they were not very good at the shutdown inning. Right after the Bruins scored the next inning, they either walked the leadoff hitter and or gave up a run. And that's something that John Savage stresses with his pitchers. Hey, the shutdown inning is the most important inning of a game for a starting pitcher. Which is right here. Which is right now. I mean, all the greats from Roger Clemens to Doc Gooden to Seavers, and you go all the way back to Koufax and everything. When they got a run, when their team got them runs, the next inning, they shut down the opponent. How much do you see baseball as a game of momentum? Yeah. No. You know, Is that why the shutdown inning? Because you're preventing the opposing team from answering right back. Well, it's so important. I mean, when you think of, if you ask Clayton Kershaw what's the most important inning of a game, he'll tell you point blank. The great ones will tell you, the Scherzers, all those guys will tell you. It, it's a shutdown inning because those guys are winners for a reason. And when you give the winners a lead, they say, you know what, thank you. I'll take it from here. Fuchs with a 2-2 count, swing and a miss. And a strikeout number two for Bergen. And that's a good start for Bergen. Again, Bergen just a freshman, folks. He's got great stuff. 
But again, you got to remember, he is a freshman. So there's going to be highs and lows that come with every freshman that's going to be on a mound in D1 baseball. What's the biggest growing pains you see with freshman pitchers? Just feeling that they belong. Mm -hmm. I mean, they got to get their feet wet. You got to remember, they're going from high school to college. Uh, at college, it's they're student athletes, and they are. They'll get up early, go to class, and you know they got to do their study time, everything else. It, it's a whole new reg uh, regiment for them. It's not high school. Bergen kicks and deals. Just missing inside to an O to Ryan Ober. Ober batting in the seven hole, sophomore, hitting 375. Six hits on the year. Bergen settles in, deals a 2 0, foul the way. is the outside corner, two and two. Well, watch Bergen on the outside part here. Mac, how about McInerney? Boom. Just love that position back there. Oh, we're finding that away. been limited for Oregon State just played eight games last year but rifles this one in between the gap and it's a one out single for the Beavs. Well all you young hitters have heard your coaches hitting coaches say hey hit the breaking ball the other way it's a perfect example watch this it's a breaking ball and Ober goes I'll hit it the other way. Good slap from Ober. Seventh hit of the season, and we'll bring up Mendezona. Again, Mendezona, top five baseball name right. in 2019. Period. Adley Rutschman's a pretty good name. Yeah, but Mendezona, come on. I mean, yeah. Mendezona. Come on, seriously? <laughs> Beautiful name. We well, speak speak some good Spanish. A veces. See? A veces. Yo hablo. Increíble, pero cierto. I don't know what that means. Oh, and one to Mendezona. Ball in for strike two. Let's get a look from the side. When we talk about the freshman. You see Bergen on the mound in his first year. UCLA's incoming class of French freshmen ranked as high as fourth best in the country of this year, which is best in the Pac 12 conference. Over the past five seasons, Savage. Brought in a top 25 recruiting class every single year. You look at McLean, Cardenas, Mullen, Bergen. Well, this is something John has done over the, his career at UCLA, and he has put the, his freshmen in the heat in a hurry. He has started them from, I mean, listen, Kreidler, Strump, Antolia all started as freshmen. Two punched into the gap in the right field. Back to back singles for the Beavs. And Mendezona collects his eighth hit of the season. Oh, these are just two good clubs, huh? I mean, watch this. This little breaking ball got fooled a little bit, but kept the barrel in the zone long enough to hit that ball to right field and set the 
Beavers up first and second with one out. John Savage going out to the mound and he's going to go to the pen right off the bat as well. Kind of tells you how important this third game is here Ted. Both teams going to the pen early. Well, we know how deep both these bullpens are. Mm -hmm. Take a look at the new pitcher when we come around other side of this break. 5-2 TLA. New pitcher for UCLA, Jesse Bergen, who starts the game, is done, and in comes Ryan Garcia in his junior season. Garcia, junior out of Sierra Madre, graduate of LaSalle High School. Get that arm loose. Well, Ryan was really good last year, out a little bit early in the season this year, nursing an injury, but when he is right, he is really good. And John Savage tells you how important this game is, game three, when he goes to the pen so early. I mean, we saw Oregon State go get Tweed early, but what a luxury to bring in somebody like Ryan Garcia, who has been a starter in his career. Now the inning started off with Greg Fuchs for Oregon State. He struck out over and Mendezona with back-to-back -back singles in a right field. Now it's the bottom of the lineup for OSU, Joe Casey. Well, Joe Casey, for those you don't know, son of former Oregon State head coach Pat Casey. Last night he had that big double, you may remember, in left center. But um, pretty good luxury to have somebody with Casey's ability hitting in the nine hole. Yeah, Casey was batting eighth last night, scored twice. Now again, 167, don't pay attention to averages, ERAs early in the season. First pitch to Casey, and their first strike. For those of you wondering, there's no nepotism going on here at all. This young man can play the game. Fast on the bases as well. Four for five. One out, two on for Oregon State. Foul the way. Well, this is exactly what Garcia is. He's, he's a machine strike thrower. Strike, strike, strike. Before this year's season, he was listed as the number 12 prospect in the Pac-12 conference by the MLB draft. High and tight, one and two. You can see right there the purpose of that pitch. He had no intention of throwing it for a strike. Just wanted to throw it up and in a little bit. Move the feet of Casey. And ideally what you would do now is just go down and away. Check over at second one, two breaking ball. No, two and two. I'm all for one. What was I last night? I think you were like two, two for six, yeah, two something for six, like that. something like that. You started pretty strong. No, I didn't. I started horrible. It was like 0 for four. That's <laughs> how important the last three at bats are. Two and two with two runners on. Garcia will step off and rub a new wrinkle <laughs> into the ball. I'd say what pitchers are in their own world out there. That right there didn't come from the bench, didn't come from anywhere. That was Ryan Garcia just not being comfortable with the pitches, put down the numbers. So he just said, you know what? I'm going to do a fake inside move. Buy me some time and go through the numbers again. He does that twice. What do you make of that? It's not comfortable. What's it? That uh, pitchers will t go ahead and there's many ways pitchers can tell their head coach. I'm not comfortable throwing that pitch. 2-2. Two -two. Line drive in a right field. Right in 
side of the line. Garrett Mitchell at right picks that up. Ober's going to play to run. And Casey lands at second. That's just real, real good stuff. We talked about his 167. Don't pay attention, and that's why. I mean, a nine-hole hitter, and Casey's come through the last two nights with two doubles. It's good fastball, folks, and at the end, that is a ball, more a ball than it is a strike, and Casey's got good hands, and he gets his hands to go through the zone so we can keep that ball fair down the right field line, and just like that, one out. The Beavers have tie and run on second base. Runners at second and third, and we're only in the second inning, folks. RBI double from Casey, top of the lineup now. Wade Meckler, second time through Oregon State's lineup. You have Mendez Zona now down third and Casey on second. One out. Showing, but oh, that's going to clip the finger of Meckler. And now the bases are loaded for Alex McGarry. Well, Ryan Garcia wants to strike because he's saying that Meckler was squared to bunt. And we're going to look at it right here. And he pulled it back. Where did that get him in the groin? Take another look. Break it got him in the elbow. Yeah, that got him good. And John Savage going out and talk to home plate umpire Will Van Rapperhorse and saying, hey, did he make an offer at that bunting? Don't look now, but the Beavers, we saw this last night, didn't we, Teddy? Bases yep. loaded and Gary up yep. with Rutschman on deck with one out. Yep. And last night in this same situation, McGarry hit a line drive single up the middle and kept the bases loaded for Rutschman, who was on deck, who came through with a two-run single to put the Beavers and extend their lead last night. Home run over the right field wall, his last at bat. He's 7-14 with bases loaded. Well, the one thing that McGarry has shown us in the two days we have seen him is he has some good hands. Good hands mean good bat speed. Belted his third home run of the season now. Beavers on all three pillows, one out, a one count. Well, this is what happened last night. McGarry with his team down three to two. He hits his rocket to right field to tie it up. Two home runs in 48 hours for McGarry. Now, big opportunity for Oregon State. Well, we joked with McGarry last night in the post game interview. I mean, does, and I asked him, I said, do you take Rutschman? Do you pay for his breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Because you're hitting in front of him. He just laughed because he understands. I know I'm going to get more fastballs with Rutschman behind me. And he's in a perfect situation here. 2-1 count. One out. Mendezona 90 feet away. Good change up by Garcia there. And again, this is what will separate the average pitcher from the excellent pitcher. The ability to throw something off speed behind in the catchment. And in this case, it was a great changeup. Swing and a miss from McGarry. He goes, Garcia strikes him out. Excuse me, Ted. He, goes, he went right back to the changeup. And again, it's one of... Uh, Ryan's best pitches and he went back to back change ups after being behind in the count two and one but it doesn't get any easier right now. Bases loaded and here comes Rutschman. First strikeout for Ryan Garcia coming in for Jesse Bergen. Bases still loaded for the Beavers. You know, Mendezona on third, Casey on second, Meckler on first and here's Rutschman. But again, this is a matchup. We talked about, you mentioned that Ryan Garcia, the 12th ranked prospect by MLB Baseball. Rutschman, the number one, right? Now Rutschman, 400 with bases loaded. You know, in the first inning, he had that back to back home run, followed by McGarry. He said, You can do that. Well, check this over the wall in center field. And it's the first ball I've ever seen go over that monster in center. 
But this is a matchup scouts want to see. Ryan Garcia, the 12th best prospect in the Pac-12. Rutschman, best prospect arguably in the entire Major League draft. So scouts love this kind of matchup right here because they get a, a kind of a, a feel what you're looking at. Now, is there any benefit for Garcia to just walk Rutschman and give up the run? No, again, John Savage would never do that with somebody like Ryan Garcia. Uh, I mean, listen, in, in order to get to the promised land in, in Omaha, Ryan Garcia is going to have to face Rutschman and get him out this year. Two outs. 0-2, a chance for Garcia to get him out. Breaking ball, foul, just... <laughs> just outside the line. I'm just laughing because Rutch is just, he's a beauty. I mean, listen, Rutschman can hit the ball all over the yard, but the last place that Ryan Kreidler at third base is thinking that Rutch is going to hit a ball is down that third base line with a breaking ball, and that's what he almost did. He almost cleaned the bases with a, a ground ball down the, the left field line. This is where the great hitters even tougher behind in the count. 0-2. Strike three. Garcia strikes him out. Big time pitch from Garcia there. Oregon State strands three base runners. Back to back case for Ryan Garcia gets out of the inning. Oregon State was knocking on the door. Ryan Garcia slams it shut. A great Sunday afternoon for baseball here at Jackie Robinson Stadium. A top five matchup between these two schools. You know, on Sundays here, Wes, uh, kids can run the bases for free at UCLA. Really? After the game, yeah. So you get to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, partner. First pitch from Chamberlain. Flying out to center. Casey's got it. Did you happen to see Casey out there in center field? His legs start to wobble a little bit just before he caught that ball. I did. And that right there, folks, is the sun. That's all it is. You see his legs got a little wobbly out there. Why Why would that happen? Well, because it, for a second, he may have lost it just for a second. That's why he keeps looking up in the sun. One pitch, one out. Here's Strumpf. And Chamberlain delivers on the outside. Strumpf uh, walked his last at bat, scored a run. One for four last night, singled in the eighth inning. Struck out twice and flat out. Side one and two. Well, this is what we were talking about with, with Casey in center field on the last fly ball. Watch him. This is just what they would call a can of corn, but watch his legs late. It's like, you see that right there? <laughs> He's like, Gumby legs. Yeah, where are they? Where is that ball? Some dancing toes. Well, you have the sun out in full strength, but also the lights are on here at Jackie Robinson Stadium. I don't know why you need those, but. Yeah, that's too much for me to it fills in the shadows. I, I, I have no clue. I have no idea. Analytical stuff, you know. Would you stop at the analytical stuff? Here's the one, two. Again, seriously, we're joking about this analytical stuff, but analytical, it's just a different name. We always have statistics. Stats. Stats. That's all they are. They're yeah. stats. And, and all these formulas are hypotheticals. I hope everybody understands that. There's nothing factual about it. The only things that are facts are the numbers that we see in statistics. Everything else is a made-up hypothetical mold. That's it. 
Have you heard the statistic about pitchers wearing a mouth guard increases the fastball two miles per hour? You're joking, right? No, this is a this is an actual fact. Okay. Well, it can't be a fact. It is a fact. It can't be. Check it out. Three two. Delivered high to left, but out of play. Almost takes out a window. Strumpf got underneath that pitch. And here's your buddy coming out to go get it. Absolutely. He was taking his time. Three, two, and Chamberlain strikes out Strumpf. Second punch out this afternoon, two away. Jack's running. I wonder what he does with the baseballs. He returns them. He's been doing this for decades. Oh, he throws them back. Yeah, he, his whole he car, back. his car is full of baseballs. And then eventually he drives Absolutely, and gives them back. Absolutely, but oh, he's, okay. he's been doing it forever. Oh, I thought he kept them. That's No, he doesn't keep it. It's his job. He gets paid. Oh, you think at UCLA would just let somebody, hey, you know what, let me hang on on left field. I'm going to drive up there, and I'm just going to steal all the balls that go over the top. I thought if it goes out of the ballpark, the fans you get know, it for free. That right there is not fan-friendly. They can't go back there. That's UCLA private property back there. I got you. Yeah. Soft fly ball, the Meckler. Fighting the sun, he has it. Three up, three down inning. Chamberlain retires the side in order. UCLA leading five to three. Welcome back to Jackie Robinson Stadium, tucked within the eucalyptus trees. It was a gift from uh, Jackie Robinson's classmate back in 1941. Seats 1,250. Kids out here enjoying some baseball. Two it top is, teams. Excuse me, Teddy. It is beautiful. I was talking to John Savage for the game. It's just a beautiful place out here. I, I wish, and I'm sure John Savage wishes, that they would expand this stadium. Maybe take out the bullpen for the Beavers and put some stands through there and put the bullpen for the Beavers, you know, behind the scoreboard over there. It's just a beautiful place over here. Here's Bo Phillip to start off the third inning. Philip, a transfer from San Joaquin Delta College facing the junior Ryan Garcia. Well, he's replacing Caden Grenier last year, number one draft pick, who was tremendous for the Beavers, and it's some big shoes to fill, but he's done very well. Batting 300 on the era. 0 for 1, flat out to right field in the first. Th 4, 5, and 6 due up for Oregon State. And this third end struck first with back-to-back -back home runs in the first. Delivered by McGarry and Rutschman. Tacked on another one by Joe Casey in the second inning on the RBI double, scoring over. Three zero down the middle. It's just a good arm out there. You can hear it when you can hear it, folks, from up in the booth. It's a good arm. But along with that good fastball that Ryan has is that tremendous plus changeup. Little chopper to Kendall. He has it. What a way. The sun is messing with these guys out there. Even on that ground ball right there for Kendall, you could see just at the last, because it was chopped, that sun is messing with everybody. Well, the sun directly behind home plate, so everyone on the infield and outfield looking right Right in. there. Yep. Just that little, little tweak. Here's Tyler Malone. Now, Tyler's somebody who showed us some power last year. And then I thought, along with Pat Bailey, I talked to Pat Bailey, head coach for the Beavers, prior to the game. I, I said, you know, Malone, not a big kid, but he's got some pop. Doesn't have any home runs this year, but we have seen him hit the ball out of the yard out of several ballparks. Five foot 11, 190 pounds on Malone. Rockets this one right to Tolia. Quick glove from the first baseman. Well, 
you know me, I'm going to be biased towards first base, man, and, and that's the position I play, and this is good stuff from Tolia. Great cues. Get a look at it right here. That is big time play. Big time play. You got to remember, he's a left handed first baseman. So that's not his glove side. Two up, two down. Here's the six hole hitter, the DH, Greg Fuchs. You know, that happened so fast. I mean, that's a top 10 play in baseball, period. I mean, that's a, a much better play than we're giving him credit. He was off the line, wasn't glove hit the glove side. Well, he's a Golden Spikes Award watch list. Well, a lot of times, I will tell you, you know, we, everybody understands that Tolia has struggled a little bit offensively this year. But sometimes a great defensive play kind of wakes you up. Two and one to Fuchs. He struck out in the second inning. 0 for one today. Soft fly ball to the left, but Stronic is there to collect. Three up and three down. Ryan Garcia retires the side in order. UCLA at the plate when we come back. UCLA up by two, home half of the third inning. Haven't made it to Jackie Robinson Stadium yet. We'll make sure to get tickets to see UCLA baseball take on Arizona Saturday, March 22nd at 2 p.m. The first 250 kids will receive a mini baseball bat. For tickets, visit uclabruins.com slash tickets or call 310-UCLA win. And we're joined by head coach for UCLA, John Savage. John, how are we doing? We're hanging in there. I mean, it's... Uh you know, Sunday in the pack, I guess. It's uh, a little crazy, first couple innings, but uh, ballpark's playing a little hot today, and uh, as uh, as you guys can see. Well, Johnny, talk about Bergen on the mound. I mean, listen, he, he was sensational early. His last two starts have been roughed up just a little bit. Is this just growing pains of a yeah. freshman, just reminding him, hey, it's not that easy? Yeah, it's not, well, it, it, it's it's oh, not oh, that yeah. easy and not that hard. You know, I mean, he's, he's making it a little more tougher than, than he should. Um, He's made some mistakes with two two strikes, and you know he's got really good command. He just has to keep learning how to really pitch out of the zone. I mean, at a young age, guys don't they don't you know they're not being taught how to pitch out of the zone. They're being taught to pitch consistently in the zone, and so he's getting a little education, and that's good. You know, I mean, he we you know we won last Sunday, and he got roughed up, and that's you know so that's a good lesson. And then uh, today, I thought he had a pretty good stuff. Uh, he made a couple mistakes and. Uh, you know, those guys made him pay for it, but he wasn't, he wasn't, you know, wasn't scared and his stuff, he's up to 93 and, you know, so he'll be fine. We like him. Yeah, we were talking on the air when it was going on and, and Ted had asked me, I mean, are there situations where you don't want Rutschman to hurt you at all? So you put him on and I was kind of like, you know, you're somebody that wants the freshman to go at these guys to, yeah. to find out what they got, what you got on the mound. Well, he, he threw a good 3-1, uh, you know, inner half fastball, and then we tried to go inner half again, and he laid it out over the plate. So, you know, I mean, whenever you see something hit hard, usually, as you know, Wes, there, it's a mistake. Um, but and that's baseball. It happens every day in the major league. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, you know, he's learning, and, uh, you know, he's, he's learning how to, you know, pitch uh, with left and then without leverage and you know it's a it's a different game here you know and uh you know i think anybody that's ever done it uh, certainly at this level and then certainly at the pro level you know they just they, they know what i'm talking about right well coach you uh oregon state put up two runs in the first inning what was the message to the team bottom of the first you guys put up five responding right back you know, we just had some good at bats. We, you know, a couple breaks. Uh, you know, the ball to hit to the shortstop should have been probably a double play. And then, you know, the fly ball to left that we lost the ball in the sun. We we did that uh, against Michigan. That happened and that led to four runs. So, we got some fortunate plays in the first inning. I thought that kind of, you know, led to that five. We hit a few balls hard, but we got some breaks. Well, they go to the bullpen early. You guys go to the bullpen early. This is a Sunday game, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. but you guys both have big time bullpens. 
but it, it kind of shows you the importance early <laughs> uh, of what this game means. Yeah, I mean, you know, the Pac-12, It's every weekend is so critical, you know. I mean, every series, and you win Friday, you lose Saturday, and then you come back, and now it's going to be a, you know, it's going to be a complete battle. And uh, so we, you know, um, we understand it. We've been through it, and they've been through it. So no, no surprises here, really. Well, speaking of surprises, I mean, the the Pac-12 has been big time this year. But how about Arizona State? Their start. No, they're. I mean, I knew they were going to be good. I mean, you know, anybody that watched them last year with, with you know, Torkelson and Aldretti and their middle infield's fantastic. And, you know, they got Lynn. And, I mean, they, they got some offensive weapons. And, and they, they did last year, you know. And it looked like they're pitching better. And they got a lot of momentum. And, you know, they're. I, it's not really a surprise to me uh, within the league. Uh, I knew they were going to be very good. And, and they're old. There's some really good jump. Hunter Bishop's having a huge year. So, uh, you know, those guys have uh, been through some things and, and, and learned. And, and now, uh, you know, they're, they're benefiting from it, uh, you know, this season. Well, Coach, thank you so much for stopping by. We look forward to this one. My pleasure. Thank you. Three up, three down inning. Chamberlain retires the side in order. To the fourth inning we go. UCLA leading five to three. Oregon State delivers first in today's game. McGarry and Rutschman back-to-back -back home runs. Then UCLA comes back in the bottom of the first inning, pro provides five runs for the Bruins. Now holding that five to three lead right now. It's the bottom third of the Beavers lineup, facing Ryan Garcia to start off the top of the fourth inning. Wes Clemens, Ted Emmerich, here with you on a gorgeous St. Patrick's Day. Well, you called it a scorcher. A scorcher, yeah. 83 degrees scorcher. I mean, it was hot. I, t I told you it was coming down from San Francisco. Ugh. You were the one with the jacket on last night complaining. It w well, last night it was 50 degrees. No, it wasn't. Here's Ober. Ober one for one. Came home on a KC RBI double in the second inning. Sophomore punched one into right field in his last at bat. Seven hits on the season. One one from Garcia. Fouled away. Fastball upstairs that Savage loves to teach his pitchers. Well, you heard, I mean, listen, John Savage, one of the better pitching coaches in the country, and he talked about it. He said, you know, pitchers learn to throw strikes, but they don't learn to throw out of the strike zone. And what he means by that, when you're ahead in the count, you can nibble on, on corners and get pitch uh, hitters to chase stuff intentionally. Like right there. Yeah, I mean, that's Ryan Garcia just overthrowing a fastball. He's, he wanted to go out of the zone, but... But uh, again, and we were talking about the freshman. We we're talking about the freshman starter, Bergen. And, you know, John was talking about, hey, Bergen throws at times too many strikes. Struck him out. Number three for Garcia as we take a look at our standings one away here in the top of the fourth. Well, uh, watch the top half of these standings, folks. And you'll be shot right off the bat. Arizona State. 18 and 0 is what you take a look at. Now they're 2 and 0. They're hosting Washington State at home, and then of course, Lindsey Mags up at Washington. Everybody knows the super regional they had at Cal State Fullerton, getting to the College World Series, and then USC started slow in, in non-conference, but they have gone 2 and 0 up at Cal, and then of course Stanford is the forgotten great great team. Uh, David Esker has got a great club up there, and they're the forgotten team so far. I mean, it, it is a big-time, tough Pac-12 2019. UW facing Oregon and USC in that Cal series right now. Well, Tracy Smith, I think 
the word on the street was Tracy Smith, head coach Arizona State, might be on the, the hot seat just a little bit. Uh, if you're on the hot seat, how, how much better could you start 18 and 0 when you're on the hot seat? Did you see what happened in that Arizona State game though last night? Really weird way for Arizona State to win. Uh, Washington State had a runner at second base, was going to score on a base hit, but the umpire, believe it or not, the umpire got in the way of the Washington State runner and knocked him down so he could not score. And then Arizona State hits a game walk-off home run. You don't see that every day. One two count to George Mendezona. One for one today. Batting in the eight hole for the Beavers. And there's that great changeup from Garcia. Back to back strikeouts, number four. Just interesting the plethora of arms and the stuff Perfect. that John Savage Perfect. has access to. I mean, he has got a big time pitching staff. Garcia's retired the past seven Beavers. For the seven via the K. Now here's Casey. Bottom of the lineup. He's going to be with that RBI double his last at bat, scoring over. And then Meckler on deck. Catch the outside corner for his first strike against Casey. Well, what you like about Ryan Garcia is he gets the ball and goes. I mean, pitchers will get into a flow. I mean, he's been on a, a streak here, and they get the ball and they go. And again, he will pepper the strike zone, but when he misses his zone, more times than not, it's intentionally trying to miss the zone. Two and two, what is he going with right here? I'm not, I, listen, I, I'm looking at about 20% the last two days. <laughs> well, get those numbers up. Chopped out of play. That was a changeup. One of the best in the country, along with Petway, who started game one of this three game set and <laughs> they, where the Bruins shut out the Beavers. Zach Petway has been tremendous. Garcia last year made 22 appearances on the mound, 12 starts, 8 1 record. 2 2, swing and a miss in the dirt. And McInerney fires down to Tolia to complete the strikeout. Number five for Ryan Garcia strikes out the side. Bruins leading 5 to 3. Five three UCLA bottom of the fourth inning eight nine and one do up for the Bruins. Here's Kevin Kendall facing Chamberlain shows butt right back to Chamberlain fielding with the glove a soft toss over to first and one away. Kendall now one for two singled in the first inning. Now it's the bottom of the lineup back in Ernie. But a little PFP. And of course, left hand pitchers never make it easy. All out effort by Kendall. Well, the bag got in his way. That's all. Hank and Ernie landed on a fielder's choice in the first. His second time up, Garrett Mitchell on deck. Drove in Tolia from third. Bruins working from behind today. They looking at a two nothing score heading into the bottom of the first inning. They put up five runs in response to that. 
Oregon State tacks on another run in the second inning. And since then, it's been quiet, 5-3. to three. Well, this is why these teams are ranked so high in, in the polls. I mean, the, they have the resilience to come back. I mean, Oregon State down 3-1 to one late in the game yes, yesterday and last night. And, you know, we were talking about Eric State, Ted. Um, and last night something happened in this game. Watching this day, it's a tie game, folks. And this ball is hit off the wall in the ninth inning. But I want you to pay attention to the runner and watch him hit. Who? The home plate umpire just chest bumps him straight and stops him from scoring. Now, I will tell you, I have never in my life seen that. Ever. Have you? No. I mean, that's insane. You know, block or charge. What is that? Ejection. Yeah, I know you were asking, can umpires be ejected? But speaking of ejected, if if you ever have a reason to get thrown out of the game as a skipper, that's the reason. Right. <laughs> I've never arguing but, your case. <laughs> yeah, but I, I will tell you this: uh, you got to give the umpire credit. You know, he didn't go backwards. The runner did. Did you notice that? Yeah, he went forward. He went forward. So the high fly ball to the left. Meckler trying to get a hold of it. Captures it. That's 10 in a row retired by Christian Chamberlain. Three up, three down. Heading to the fifth inning. Defending national champs trailing by two. Top of the fifth inning in the top of the Beavers lineup. One, two, and three. Meckler, McGarry, and Rutschman do up on our Opus Bank. Game of the week. Wes Clements, Ted Emberg. It is the biggest game today. Oh, yeah. It's the biggest series in the country. And what a way to start conference play. Well, we talked about the strength of the Pac-12. But when you think about this, you know, this is the first series of the year, and you got one versus three. Now, somebody's obviously going to win this series. And somebody's record will go to two and one, and then the other obviously one to one and two. But you know, there's there's no easy outs in this Pac-12. But I mean, this game today started in a hurry in the first inning. Well, let's look at our State Farm here to help life go right highlights. The back-to-back -back home runs by Alex McGarry and Adley Rutschman. Yeah, how about this one, folks? I've been, done a lot of games here and very, I've never, quite frankly, seen a ball over the monster. And Rutsch deposited it back by those trees. Eight runs in the first two innings combined for both teams. Since then, it's been quiet. Both pitchers shutting down the offense. Ryan Garcia has retired the past nine Beavers batters. And on the flip side, Christian Chamberlain for Oregon State has retired the past ten Bruins. Well, this streak started with Rutschman for Garcia. You may remember he punched him out with the bases loaded. Alex McGarry with the home run to put the Beavers on the board first. It's one for two. Struck out his second plate appearance. 2-0. Oh. Inside check swing didn't go. On the appeal. 3-0. Oh. Well, Beavers are aiming to hold tradition today and win their fourth consecutive Pac-12 opening series. They've held that since the 2016 season, winning their opening series of conference play every year. They won last night 7-3. They were shut out 8-0 Friday night. 3-1. Ball four, one out walk to McGarry. Yeah, that's a bad walk. That is a bad walk from Garcia, and he knows it out there. Ideally, you want to face Rutsch with Nobody on. Rutschman as well. One for two with that home run and the strikeout. Now with the runner on first, one out. During the College World Series, Rutschman broke the 
College World Series record, producing 17 hits. And this will warn a visit from the catcher McInerney and third baseman Kreidler. Well, this is what happened in Rutschman's last at bat. Talking about the bases loaded, arguably the best hitter in the country, and Ryan Garcia. What's he do? He freezes him on a fastball in the outside park. Rutsch knew it, didn't say a word, or he wanted to. He just bit his tongue. I think he had a couple words there, partner. Well, catchers, I tell you what, catchers have a relationship with home plate umpires, obviously, but um, you got to be careful. How, how they talk to him because they need those same pitches I mean a lot of times hitters might say or catchers that are hitters who get rung up they might come back and say I want that same pitch for my for my pitcher Rushman with his seventh home run of the season to start the opening frame of action following McGarry's home run and you call Rutschman the Andrew Luck well yeah everybody knows that when Andrew Luck was at Stanford what did everybody say about him? They said he's a what? He's the best prospect, quarterback prospect, to come out in decades. And that's exactly what Adley Rutschman is as far as Major League Baseball goes with catching prospects coming out of college. Already in the history books of Oregon State, 10th all-time, 135 RBIs, 7th all-time in walks with 105. Get a look at six home runs, you see the 788, but what we don't see there is he's hitting over five bills with runners in scoring position. And if Rutschman wasn't a catcher, Ted, he'd still be a potential number one draft pick just on his hitting. It's a little bit surprised that the green light wasn't given to Rutsch right there. You got a 5-3 game, a 3-0 count, and you know pretty much a fastball's coming. Now does Garcia pitch around? No. He no. just, he, well, his secondary stuff is so good, his changeup's tremendous. Three balls and a strike. Fly ball deep to right field, danger all over, touch them all. Two-run shot from Adley Rutschman, his second of the game. Just watch and enjoy what one of the best we have seen in decades can do. Folks, this ball is up and out of the zone. I want you to take a look at where this pitch is and what he did with it. Watch where this pitch is. And, and look at McInerney behind the dish. He's like, well, we're tied. One swing from Rutschman, his second home run of the day. And we're not at five apiece. We'll get a look at it right here. Mm, what a swing. You see Garcia on the mound, he knew it. All pitchers know it, but when you face someone like Rutschman, they throw a pitch there, they knew. They, he knew right off the bat. Philip 0 and 2. Last night it was a tie game. 3 3 going into the ninth inning, then Oregon State took off. Knotted up here, five apiece. And 1 and 2 to Bo Phillip. Philip 0 for 2 today, flying out to right, grounded out to Kendall at short. Garcia strikes out Phillip. Six on the day. Well, we've talked about the 2019 ML prospect watch and top four players according to MLB.com. None other than Mr. Rutschman on top and Bobby Witt Jr., Andrew Vaughn, of course, up at Cal. And you can see why Rutschman is seventh all in Oregon State for walks, 105 on the year. 
three at bats, two home runs, producing three runs. Solo homer in the first, two run shot in the fifth. Here's the left hitting Malone. And knocks that down first out of play. Last night the pitching was pretty good from UCLA. And the junior Jack Ralston allowed just one run in the six frames that he pitched. Yeah, they were. They, it, it, as far as pitching was, but the, uncharacteristically of the Bruins staff, they had so many walks as a staff last night. And unfortunately for the Bruins, it came back to haunt them. And folks, Ryan Garcia, make no mistake, has a very, very good arm. And that was a good fastball. And Rutschman made it look like a, a BP fastball. One, two. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Garcia, number seven. But Oregon State ties this game up. Well, they do. And just, folks, one of the best we have seen in decades shows us why. A blast down the right field line ties this game up. We're heading to the bottom of the fifth. Here's Jake Priest to lead off the bottom of the fifth inning. Five apiece. Game three. Series split right now. UCLA took the opening game Friday evening in the shutout, eight to nothing. Oregon State comes back yesterday in the 7-3 win. And for the second day in a row, home run ties up the game. Priest, Strumpf, and Stromick, 2-3 and 4 for UCLA. Well, let's see if the Bruins have an answer. Chamberlain has retired the past 10 Bruins. He's thrown 53 pitches, 33 of those for strikes. He's given up only two hits. Three strikeouts so far from the Reno Nevada native. Brees knocks one through the hole right side. Lead off single for the Bruins. Well, this is big time baseball here. I mean, two of the best in the country. And most likely, uh, the winner of today's game will end up being the number one team in the country as we take a look at this base hit by Prees. And why do I say that? Well, Vanderbilt, who was the number one country in many other polls, uh, has lost their series at Texas A&M. So the, they should be in all the polls, a consensus number one. And my guess it's going to be the winner of this game right here. First pitch to Strum for a breaking ball for a ball one. Junior 0 for 1 today. Drew a walk in the first inning and then scored a run on the RBI from Ryan Kreidler. Bruins produced five runs in the bottom of the first inning. Since then, it's been quiet. Popped up. In the foul territory, that's going to be over the fence. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear somebody saying it's coming back, coming back. I'm just laughing because there's so many times where you're on the field, and I played first base a lot, but they'll, they'll always tell you, hey, you got room, you got room, and that ball's in a parking lot. <laughs> Strumpf settles in. Big hole on the right side for him. Fastball upstairs, two and one. Well, Timberlin going on his fourth inning of work, and the Beavers' bullpen is starting to play catch. Oh, I thought about it, but. Lays off three and one. Cleanup hitter Stronic on deck for UCLA. Right 
Jake Priest breaking up that 10 batter shutout that Chamberlain has issued. Shaded towards third, three one. High fly ball to left field. Meckler back on the warning track. It's gone. Two run homer from Chase Strumpf. UCLA regains the lead seven to five. So you want some baseball on a beautiful Sunday afternoon in Westwood? We got a good one here. And Chase just left the yard in a hurry, and this is a ball just elevated. You make mistakes to both of these lineups, and they're going to deposit him over the wall, and that's exactly what Chase does. The Brewers answer in a hurry. Just like that, up two in the bottom of the fifth. Still no outs with Stronic up. One for two today with a run scored. Single to right, back in the first. Looking at the middle third of the Bruins lineup. Amstrona Kreidler Tolia. Now Chamberlain working quickly, delivers two strikes to Stronic. 0 oh and 2. That's our fourth home run of the game. Three from Oregon State. One for UCLA and Adley Rutschman delivering two of those three for the Beavers. Well, normally the ball doesn't carry here at Jackie Robinson Stadium, but it is a little bit warm today, as you mentioned. What would you call this? A scorcher call a at 83. A scorcher. Yeah, scorcher. This in Arizona, 83 in Arizona, is a perfect day. I'm still getting adapted. You realize that, don't Still you? getting adapted, but yeah. I agree. Yeah. But. The ball normally doesn't carry, and, and and I mentioned I've never seen a ball over the monster here, well, ever. Especially, especially at night. Never, that. yeah. But you get a little marine layer that comes in at night here. This is belted in the left center field. The chance for Casey. He closes for round number one. Well, we've talked a lot about the Pac-12. Let's see what's going on elsewhere. You see number 19 undefeated Arizona State knotted up with Washington State and then of course Lindsey Meg's clubs at Oregon and no score there and then USC going for the sweep up at Cal. How's Arizona looking this year, your alma mater? Well, they were picked fourth in the preseason poll as the Beavers are going to make a pitching change right now. But they were picked fourth, and they really haven't they've underperformed per everybody's expectations so far. See if they're going to make a change. There's, there's no, yeah, there's no reason to come out right now if you're not going to make a change. See a look at uh, Jack Mulholland, the southpaw in his junior season out of Washington, warming up. Well, just a plethora of arms for both of these bullpens. I mean, Jake has, has been the closer for Oregon State and closed some games in Omaha last year, but he has been stellar in his career with the Beavers, as most of the arms have been for the Beavers. So Christian Chamberlain, his time is done. UCLA leading now seven to five. New pitcher, Jake Mulholland coming up after this. UCLA leading this game, the deciding game three, seven to five. New pitcher coming in for Oregon State. As we remind you, Pac-12 softball, UCLA against number five, Washington. That's coming up right after the conclusion of this series decider here at Jackie Robinson Stadium. Today's game of the week presented by Opus Bank. And we have a new pitcher. Well, it's Mitchell Verberg, and initially we thought that uh, Jake Mulholland was coming in, but it is the right-hander Mitchell. You see his numbers. 
You're gonna, not going to have very many bad numbers out of either of these pants. They're just uh, loaded with arms, loaded with talent, as they are on an annual basis. Redshirt sophomore and of Link Oswego, Oregon. Didn't play last year, but uh, 2017, he made 14 appearances, all in relief. Nine and two-thirds innings with a .93 ERA and two saves. So with one out, here's Ryan Kreidler, now facing Verberg. Kreidler pops one into right field, charging in is Malone, securing out number two. Kreidler now one for three in today's game. And it brings up the junior, Michael Tolia. You know what I like that they do here at UCLA? They let the children announce. Yep. Yeah, I love that. It's a great environment here. I think it's one of the best deals, especially if you have kids and Absolutely. family. I mean, what, a couple bucks for a ticket? You can have them run around, all kinds of energy expended, and uh, you don't have to hire the babysitter. Watch some baseball. I mean, this doesn't get much better than this. Well, hold on. I mean, if they're running around, you still got to have a babysitter because if you're mom and dad, you got to watch the game. Well, I mean, the kids, you know, they play with each other, right? You, well, you still got to have somebody watching them. Ball from Verberg. 101. Did you go up to a lot of big league games when you were a kid? Not a lot. My uncle uh, took me to some Dodger games. Who was pitching back then? Well, I'm. Let's see, I'm 29, so <laughs> I'm going to get, if we go back, uh, it was just nine years ago. I mean, Kershaw, I mean, it was just, no. Um, I, I actually forget. How's that? All right. Tolio, one, two, count, two out, no one on. Bruins up by two, going the other direction this time. All right, clips one off the pole. But it wasn't Drysdale. Okay. <laughs> okay. Don Sutton could have been on the mound. Andy Messersmith, possibly. Charlie Huff. Bert Hooten, one of the best change-ups ever. Shift on by Oregon State. Ryan Ober at second, playing in shallow right field. And Phillip up the middle. Berberg working out of the stretch with no one on. A little extra time twisting that ball. One, two, just missing. And arguably one of the, the Dodgers' best infield. From Steve Gopi at first, Davey Lopes at second. We'll take a look at this. Billy Russell was at shortstop, and the Penguin, Ron Say, was at third base. Probably still the best infield the Dodgers have ever had. Who did you look to for inspiration? My mom. I mean, player-wise. But that's that's nice. Well, towering ball to right field. Yeah, Malone on the warning track. He's just gonna watch it leave Jackie Robinson Stadium. <laughs> well, I tell you what, it don't <laughs> you do not want to wake up this bat, Michael Tolia. I mean, that's a great sight for the Bruin fans and John Savage. He has not produced so far this year, but when he starts hitting balls out of the yard, his bat wakes up. We've just seen Chase Strump leave the yard earlier in this inning, and he has struggled a little bit. And now Michael Tolia just elevates a ball to right field. It's a hanging breaking ball, and deposit it on top of the batting cage out in right field. His first home run of the season extends the Bruins lead by three. Here's McLean. Takes a first pitch ball from Verberg. Third pitcher we've seen from Oregon State today. Sam Tweet started off, then Chamberlain came in to replace Tweet, and now the redshirt sophomore on the mound. There's a strike one on one. Good pitch right there. 
But that's the difference. Listen, when you have two great teams facing each other, the mistakes that pitchers make, you'll get hurt. But when you play some of the other clubs, you have an opportunity to make mistakes because the hitters just, quite frankly, aren't as good as these two clubs. And that's why you see, you'll see some people saying, well, what's going on? These guys are supposed to be ranked one and three and all that stuff. And you got, you know, 14 runs on the board or 13 runs. One, two, chasing in the dirt was McLean and he'll get punched out by Verberg. UCLA extending their lead up by three. Well, they have, I mean, what an answer. The Beavers take the lead. Preseason All-American, Chase Trump. And then right behind him, Tolia. We're heading to the top of the six, eight, five, Bruins. UCLA picked to win the conference in this year's preseason coaches poll. Up eight to five against the defending national champs, the Oregon State Beavers, as we start the sixth frame of action here at Jackie Robinson Stadium. West Clements, Ted Eberg, and our Pac-12 crew, along for the game of the week presented by Opus Bank. And it is a game of the week, certainly. Two home runs for UCLA, three for Oregon State. This game has had everything. Well, the right side of the infield for the Bruins, Chase Strump and Michael Tolia. And from an average standpoint, you know, both of them have struggled so far this season. And all it takes sometimes is to hit a ball hard. Seven and eight do up for the Beavers. This one's going to be knocked out of play. Garcia going back to work, trying to hold on to this three run lead. But I'm just going to go out on a limb right here. I don't think eight runs is going to win this game. This is Oregon State. Play two, check swing. The appeal down third. Lusky says no. Isn't it interesting? In, in college baseball, in unison, you will hear the dugout say yes he did yes he did right that was yeah. close but he didn't, he didn't go. good call good call mike lusky third base umpire it's gotta be tough being an umpire you know people only look at the bad calls no one says oh you made some great calls today ground ball handled by strumpf lets it come to him over to first one away It's just so fundamentally sound out there, Strump. Mike Lusky down at third base. And you're right. I mean, listen, nobody goes out and says, hey, great, great, game. great call. Yeah. Great game. No. It's just, it's always something they've done wrong. Yeah, it's got to be tough. You got to really love the game. And all these guys certainly do. Going all over the Pac-12 conference to call. Well, now with video replay, I mean, it's kind of humbled some umpires. And others have gotten even more arrogant. Arrogant how? Oh, just throwing at guys in, in a hurry, on a short leash, the whole thing. But, you know, listen, it's a tough job for the most part. Uh, they do their job better than, than most anybody else could do it. Yeah, it's a thankless job. 0-2 to Ober. Fights that one away. But then again, we have stuff like we saw last night at Arizona State where home plate umpire literally, literally blocks the runner from scoring from Washington State. Yeah. But it's it was an impressive block, though. I mean, seriously, yeah, it was. He, he you're gonna block. You gotta go a full set. Well, he he uh, home plate umpire went forward. And that was the most impressive thing of the whole. McInerney with a throwdown. Another punch out for Garcia today. That's number eight. Two away. George, well, you're gonna take a look at the off-speed stuff, and it's a changeup, and Garcia's got one of the best changeups in the country. I mean, he made the mistake to Rutschman with the home run, but he's come right back and got back in form.
Since the home run from Rutschman, he's retired the past four batters. This one line in the gap. A diving play, though, by Stronic. Wow, hang a star on that one in left field. Are you kidding me? I mean, Jeremy Idens has been out and normally one of the best outfielders in the country, and Stronic says, you know what? I can do this. Watch this. The sixth inning, UCLA leading by three. Great diving stab out in left field. Stronic capturing that one and robbing Mendezona of an extra hit. And we're standing by here with uh, interim head coach Pat Bailey. Coach, how are we doing this afternoon? Doing great. A little frustrated. I mean, one of the things that we try to do game within a game when we score runs, we expect our guys, our pitchers, to put shut people down. And we first inning we score two and give up five, and then we score two to tie it up and give up three. So. Um, that part's frustrating, and we're striking out too much, too. Yeah, well, Pat, we, you know, we've talked about this shutdown inning. It's been difficult for the Bruins. It's been difficult for you. But isn't this what happens when you get two big clubs like this? It's, I mean, there's no easy out, one through nine on both sides. I agree. You know, I think part of the problem is, is if you locate pitches based on what guys are doing, you're, you're going to, well, it's in all levels of baseball, you're going to get people out. But there, there's outs to get if you just locate pitches. Right. Now, let's talk about Rutsch. I've never, I've done a lot of games here at UCLA. I've never seen one go over the monster. Um, uh, that's impressive. But I think even more impressive was that, I mean, Garcia's got a good fastball, and he takes that ball in and just rockets it down the right field line. He's got to be one of the best you've ever had or ever seen. Yeah, he can really, he can hit. I mean, he's, and he's just a really good student of the game. He knows his areas that he really, uh, up to two strikes, that he can really strike the baseball, and he's not afraid uh, to get into a count and even at times get the two strikes to hit. Well, now, you, your starter today, Tweed, was that something that you talked about prior to the game with, with Nate Yeski? Hey, if he gets in trouble early, we're just going to go to the pen because it is a Sunday? Yes. And he did get in trouble. He got in big trouble in the first inning. You know, we, I mean, we obviously lost a sun ball to start the half inning off. But right. after that, the location of pitches were not very good. And so um, we had a short lead switch the idea of bringing Chamberlain. I was hoping we'd get three or four or five out of him, but we didn't. Coach trailing by three right now. What's the message to the team moving forward? Don't quit. Go up there and have competitive bats compete. And who are you most impressed with thus far in today's game? Uh, for us? Yep. Uh, we're obviously Raj. I mean, that's, you know, no brainer. He doesn't count. <laughs> yeah. Outside of, outside of Raj, we've had some good at bats. I mean, it's. Um, we just got to string some things together. That one inning where we had the bases loaded one out, we had our two hottest hitters up, and they both struck out. So well, yeah, that's you, baseball. It is. And you talk about, and, and, you know, what was interesting about that situation is Garcia had not thrown his changeup up until McGarry got up there. And he, he went back to back with the changeup right there. Obviously, it's one of the best in the country. And then he freezes Rutch on it with a good fastball on the outside port, borderline pitch, but uh, ends up being strike three. Yes. He, he threw quality pitches when he needed to. I agree. Well, Coach, thank you for joining us. Best of luck with the uh, rest of today's game. We're rooting for both sides here. Thank you. You guys have a great day. Thanks, Coach. Right. Bye. Joined by interim head coach Pat Bailey of Oregon State in his first year. i tell you what, Pat Bailey, you mentioned it last night in the broadcast. And for those of you who did not, were not with us last night, uh, Pat Bailey's got a, a rule that, that he does not allow cell phones in the clubhouse, right. in the locker room. No cell phones. And, and I just absolutely love it. In today's era of, hey, I got to get to my phone. I got to get to my phone. I got to get to my phone. I got to post something. I mean, he wants his young men to concentrate on what their job is, and that's to play this game, and he wants their full concentration. And I love that rule. Yeah, he talked about if you want to be really great at somewhat great at something, you have to have a very narrow focus on what you're doing. And all of these distractions, the cell phones, the tweeting, these are just taking away from the job these student athletes have to do. If they have enough work in the classroom, then trying to translate that to the field, you know, you don't need the extra stuff. It's tough. I mean, college coaches uh, have a tough job. They really do in this era. Yep. And we didn't have this two decades ago. We didn't have the social media. We didn't have the Instagram. We didn't have any of this. And uh, it at, it obviously, I mean, Herm Edwards, head coach, football coach, coach for ASU. I mean, have you ever heard him speak? 
Yeah. I mean, he is a tremendous speaker and motivational speaker. And one of Herm's favorite sayings. There's a bump by McInerney. A quick toss over to first. He does his job, advances Kendall in a scoring position with one out. But one of Herm Edwards' favorite sayings is Mitchell. Don't send. Don't push send. Don't push send. Think. Call your parents before you push send. Call your friend before you push send. Just don't push send. And how many athletes have we seen? On a, a daily basis, get in trouble. Oh yeah, by pushing send. I mean, yeah. There's a there's a huge downside for student athletes. You post the wrong thing, you say the wrong thing. You know, that's all across the spectrum. Well, I think you know. Listen, you could argue that social media is one of the worst things that's ever happened. Or is it one of the best things? Well, you could argue that as well. But. Um, you know, social media is social media. I mean, unfortunately for social media, along with the good, you're going to have the bad. And when you're 16, 17, 18, for that matter, you could be 50 years old. And if somebody says something to, to, to you on social media, it, it inherit, you have to have discipline to just let it go. One out of Mitchell upstairs. Part of the changing landscape of college sports. Fourth time through the Bruins lineup. Mitchell with the runner on second, which is Kendall. One out and a 2-0 count. Mitchell won for three today. Had that double and a shallow left to start the game. That fell between Phillip and Meckler. Glasses down, Meckler was trying to locate. Well, you see this pitch. It's a great pitch down and in. And yeah, I, that one right there, 100% Mitchell win. Two one. Fly ball, center field. Joe Casey five steps back now. Climbing backwards near the warning track, tagging is Kendall. He's going to head over to third. Well, I tell you what, I mean, you saw a little bit right there from Garrett Mitchell. I, I think Garrett Mitchell, I mean, he's a big man. He's six foot three and he can run like the wind. And right now he's got a leadoff mentality. I, I think when Jeremy Idens gets back for the Bruins, uh, Jeremy will go in that top spot. And then just think of the lineup then. I mean, that means Garrett is going to, you know, move back in the lineup and be able to think a little bit different than he does as a leadoff hitter. I didn't so dangerous on the base pass. And miss it this weekend as Priest takes a first pitch ball from Verberg. Herbert came in in the fifth inning. Gave up a one out home run by Tolia. And the other hit from Kendall to start this inning. Now Kendall 90 feet away, 1 out. Catches the inside corner for a strike, 1 1. came in to pinch hit for Silva in the second inning. One for two today. High fly ball. Shielding is Ober. He's called off right fielder. Coming in is Malone off the tip of his glove. And the Bruins add on another run. That's Sun playing all kinds of tricks on the outfield today. Well, I think Casey's just a little bit frustrated because he thinks he's got a beat on it, but then late Malone just flat out overruns it.
How many times have we seen that today? Well, uh, for head coach Pat Bailey, too many times. But initially, early, the sun ball that Mitchell hit in the first inning, I think sometimes the sun is just a pain. And it is a legitimate excuse. That one he just overran, speaking of Malone. That's an error on Malone. He brings home another run. It's 9-5 to five Bruins. I told you 8-1 runs wouldn't win this. You told me. Here's Strumpf who delivered that home run over the left field wall. Two-run shot, his last at-bat. He scored two for three times today. Back in the fifth, you had Priest on, who singled, and then Strumpf with the shot over the left field wall. Two outs, 1 0. Oh, that's a good pitch from Berber. Well, this is what he did in his last at bat with the Bruins tra trailing. Right, I should say the game was tied, and in one swing, just like that, the Bruins took the lead. And Now things starting to fall right for UCLA. Error on the right fielder Malone scores another run, scores Kendall. Now up by four, one one to Strunk. Where is that pitch? Outside of the strike zone, two and one. Well, Chase, if he had the opportunity, he'd say, "Come on, Wes, that ball's outside." Mm, looks good. Center Casey there, round number three. We'll take a break through six innings. UCLA leading Oregon State nine to five. Back after this. Pac-12 baseball is presented by Opus Bank, the official bank of the Pac-12 conference. By Rawlings, champions choose Rawlings, and by State Farm, here to help life go right. Oh, beautiful look at UCLA, and there's the statue of Jackie Robinson. Four-sport athlete here at UCLA. Football, basketball, track, and baseball. Bruins up 9-5. to five. New pitcher coming into the game for the Bruins. Richard Sr., Nathan Hadley, right here from Los Angeles, takes the mound. Well, he's got a great arm and a great secondary pitch, and it's like it's kind of like a split finger. I mean, it was in last night's game. Uh, he gave up, unfortunately, for the Bruin fans, the game-tying home run to McGarry, but John Savage going right back to him and said, I got you again today. I'm going to run you out there, and that's uh, the confidence that John Savage shows in his pitchers. Yesterday is yesterday. Today is another day. You see Hadley taking a moment there before he settles in. He'll face Casey. Casey first pitch, ground ball. To Tony, a quick toss over, one down. <laughs> How about the arm? Did you see that throw from Hadley at first base to Kendall? Let's take another look at that one. Hadley gets a, the toss from Tolia and just throws a rocket to Kendall at shortstop. One pitch, one out, top of the lineup now. Meckler was hit by a pitch in the second inning, struck out and grounded out. It's 100% first pitch take. Well, that's skipped in by Hadley. And, and that's frustrating. I'm going to tell you what, these are the little things inside of games. John Savage is over there. You get it, uh, he runs out Hadley. You get a first pitch swinging for an out. The next pitch is going to be taken by a hitter, especially down four runs a thousand percent of the time. And John Savage is going, that's just a freebie. Just throw it down the middle. But this is Hadley. Watch this, folks. You talk about somebody that's got some energy. We're going to get a look at it after this pitch, but. One-one to Meckler outside. 
Watch this. This is him getting over in the first half. But watch this. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> he just throws a rocket over to Kendall. and a strike. Oregon State today has been unable to get their leadoff man aboard throughout today's game. has gotten on board three times, their leadoff hitter. Here's a 3-2 chance for Oregon State. Oh, there you go. It's a one-out walk to Meckler, but Beavers There's with a runner on now. Alex brings it back to McGarry. Well, the Beavers right now just need base runners. It doesn't matter how they reach base. Could be bunt, just a dunker. But chasing four runs, you just need to get base runs. McGarry's been hot. It's three for six last two games. Three RBIs, two home runs. Today he's one for two with a home run to produce the first run for Oregon State. Then he struck out and then walked in the fifth inning. And then Rutschman brought him home with a two-run shot. Take a home run derby on here today. Well, it is a scorcher. Fine. It's out here. It's a scorcher at 83 hey, when you're, degrees. When you're down on the field and you yeah. get that Astro turf bouncing, Astro turf. Uh, this is beautiful grass. Astro turf behind home plate. Not on the sidelines where we're standing. When we do the open. Come on now. I, I don't, I'm the one. Be worried about heat on my dome. We need to get you a hat or something. Why? Because you this don't have any perfect, hat. It's perfectly round. Very rare. There's a lot of people jealous. When they look at my <laughs> dome. Meckler on first one out of one. Quick throw over by Hadley. Well, this right here is something that might frustrate a head coach. You got a four run lead. And you got one out. The pitcher just walked a runner, and then you have Rutschman on deck. You're talking about John Savage here. Correct. <laughs> Meckler, one for one in stolen bases. You talked about all the home runs? Yeah. Take a look at him. Rutschman, two home runs, one over the monster, McGarry. Who hit one last night and then Chase Strump. And just like that is Buddy Tolia. Five home runs today. Ball and a strike to McGarry. Look at that quick release of Hadley. What it, listen, it, it, there's no sugar coating it. I mean, Hadley is very, very high strung out there. You can tell by the way, even threw the ball to Kendall. High strong house, so high energy. Yeah, everything he does is fast. Has that back toe on the first base side of the rubber. One, two, struck him out. Well, that's just a great. That's his off-speed pitch, and right when he needed it too, because of course Rutschman is coming up. But watch the off-speed, and you see him fooled way out in front. And speaking of Rutschman, for the series, three games, five for nine, six RBIs, three walks, and yes, two home runs today. Well, that's pretty good. Came in in this game batting 423. And his first at bat, home run, struck out, two run shot, now his fourth time up. There's going to come a time this year, and it's going to happen in May. When games start to, you can see how important they are that coaches just stop pitching to him. 
Um, his numbers from an RBI standpoint probably won't be as good as they were last year because he is such a dangerous hitter that come late in the season in May, coaches are not going to let him beat him. Anyway, we're going to take a look at what he has done today. And folks, I, I've been doing a lot of games here at UCLA, and I have never seen a ball go where this ball went. And then, of course, he just rockets one down the line for his second home run of the game. What is it in his swing that you see specifically that makes him so good? It's not so much his swing. It's just who he is. I mean, he, he is a student of the game. You heard his head coach, Pat Bailey. And there's a buck called. So it'll send Meckler in a scoring position with two outs. But um, it, it, it's just who he is. I mean, you'd have to talk to this young man. I, I remember talking to Pat Casey about Adley Rutschman as a freshman when Pat Casey had put him behind the mound. And the Beavers had one of the best staffs in the entire country. And I said, do you worry about putting this young freshman behind the dish? And I never forget Pat Casey came to me and he said, Normally, I would, but not with him. He is special, and he is different. And those are the intangibles that this young man has. Facing a ball and a strike from the redshirt senior, Hadley. Hadley with a hard look. Look at the side from McInerney, runner on second, two away. And he'll deliver at the shins, two and one. Well, how about some of the catchers who went number one, Wes? Well, we have seen this, but uh, again, Steve Chilcott, have no clue who he is. I wasn't even born then. Mike Ivey, that eh, was about, uh, I don't know how old at that point in time. Danny Goodwin, and of course, B.J. Surhoff and Joe Maurer, who recently retired. And then, of course, everybody's projected number one. And great change up to Rutschman there. And here's the situation with first base open, four-run lead. But again, you can afford to to not come to give in to Rutschman here with first base open. And it's not that it's taking anything away from Phillip behind him and, and Fuchs, but Rutschman can cut this lead in half with one swing. Rutschman has only struck out 10 times this season. 2-2. Two -two. Uh, gets a piece of it. Stays alive. We have Strump. Playing in shallow right, back on the grass. And Joel back near the warning track in right field. Rutschman settles in. Hadley deals 2 2 foul straight back. Oof. That's a mistake right there. That ball's up in the zone, and Adley's going, how did I miss that? Well, Rutschman wants that one back. Yeah, well, I tell you who doesn't want it back is Adley. Adley doesn't want that pitch back. You know, Rutschman is somebody that if you're at the game, you don't go to the snack bar, you don't go to the bathroom, you don't go anywhere. Everybody's got their eyes on this man when he hits on both dugouts. Line drive in a center field from Adley Rutschman. Rounding third now is Meckler, and he will score. <laughs> and Rutschman keeps on producing. What more can you say? Just watch and enjoy, folks. Three for four today. Two home runs in a single. One of those home runs, a two-run shot. Ends an RBI single to the list today. But enjoy it now, like I say, folks, because as the season goes on, opposing skippers are going to say, you know what, sorry, but I'm not going to deal with him. At what point do they do that? Well, I, again, like I said, I mean, it, it depends. It, it depends on who you're facing. I don't know what Lindsey Meg's going to do. Don't know what Tracy Smith uh, at Arizona State's going to do. David Esker, I, I have no idea. Um, but there does come a time when you just got to understand this guy is an elite, elite talent. A talent that we haven't seen in a long, long time. I mean, right now, to me, it seems like I don't even know why you would pitch to him. 
just well, intentionally walk him. But is that just kind of poor form in the collegiate level, or is that kind of frowned upon, or do you want to pitch to a guy, you know, sometimes at least? Well, you see right there, it's 139 RBIs. It's ninth at all time and as a junior, and this is just the start of his junior season. But I don't think he's going to have an opportunity of driving as many runs as he did last year. But, you know, you may remember how they pitched Barry Bonds. Remember when Bonds was going nuts and Buck Showalter walked him with the bases loaded at one time. And, yeah. and I'm not saying that that's where we're at right now because at that time, Barry was just hitting home runs virtually every other game. But Barry was so advanced at that time. Um, it's just, you know, it's up to the coaches of what they're going to do with this man. 2-1 to Phillip. Outside three and one. That last RBI single from Rutschman, he now is tied ninth all time with uh, Oregon State record books. Now with Darwin Barney, class of 2007 for ninth. Former Cubby. Both with 139. Yeah. Three one. Chasing is Phillip. Full count. Well, Oregon State came out hot in the game three, produced two runs to start off the game. McGarry and Rutschman with home runs. It's two to nothing going into the bottom of the first, and UCLA coming right back, putting up five. Oregon State tacks on another one in the second. Quiet for a couple of innings. And Hadley taking care of both Phillip. Strikeout number two of the afternoon. UCLA in the lead today, 9-6, to six, back after this commercial break. Number three ranked UCLA Bruins in the lead. Game three, the series split 9-6. to six. As we head to the bottom of the seventh inning, time for a little stretch here. Don't forget, number one UCLA against UW, ranked number five in the nation. Coming up next, that's right after the conclusion of this game three conference opener of 2019. You know, we're seeing something very similar here, right? High ranked Pac-12 teams in the in the country and uh, UCLA Bruins big time softball program. And it's, it is the conference of champions. And you take a look at what's going on across the Pac-12. Arizona State looking to stay undefeated ahead of Washington State in the bottom of the sixth. And then uh, no score still. Up in Eugene and knotted up at one up at California. USC looking to go for the sweep of the Bears. Well, some good games going on right now all around the Pac-12. Well, I think the story, I mean, it's Arizona State. There's no question. Tracy Smith's uh, Sun Devils, as much as you know, I don't like to talk up the Sun Devils. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, you got to give them credit. Big time. UCLA won't be facing Arizona State, but they will be facing Arizona on Friday for the three-game series. I actually think um, you could argue that Arizona State should be a top 10 ranked team in the country. Period. They're looking to go 19 and 0. 19 and 0. But they're just starting conference play. Understand that. But when you look across and you see the SEC has got 12 ranked teams, I mean, just stop. Mm -hmm. I mean, with all due respect to the SEC, I mean, that's unheard of for me. Stronach leading off the bottom of the seventh, pushes this through the hole on the left side. Lead off single for UCLA. Well, that's just beautiful. I mean, you love to see that. I mean, the shortstop, they had shifted uh, towards right field for, for Stronach, and he just feathers that ball through the 5-6 hole, and another leadoff hitter on for the Bruins. You see him shading to the right field, and look at that big hole over there. So much for the analytics, huh? That's their uh, fourth time that the leadoff man's been aboard for the Bruins. Their 10th hit collected tonight, or today, I should say. It's nighttime somewhere. Right. So just just roll with it. Europe or Asia or somewhere? Huh? Here's Kreidler. 
going to give himself up. Here's a throw over to first. Slanny Max safely is Stronic. Well, Ryan doesn't doesn't like the call. We're going to get a look at it. Does he pull the bat back? Almost hits himself in the face. Well, with hold the bat. on. He did pull the bat back. I mean, this is uh, he's calling a foul ball. Yeah, that's interesting. Huh. Tough job. I, I will say this. It is so tough being a home plate umpire and to call that foul tip. And we're seeing it in slow-mo. Here's Crather giving himself up. Fouls that. Now you think about what's going on here. You get Ryan Kreidler, the Bruins' leading hitter, one of the most productive this season. As you take a look at his numbers, three home runs, 364, and 12 RBIs. It'll tell you how important John Savage thinks this game is. He is electing to take the bat out of the hand of Kreidler and bunt. Mm -hmm. And bunt Stronick over to second base because he wants to get another run on the board. Kreidler with 24 hits on the season. RBI single in the first, so on deck is Tolia if Crowther gives himself up again here. 0-2, he's probably swinging away. And he strikes out. Second strikeout from Mitchell Verberg. And now we'll see the first baseman, Michael Tolia, with a runner on and one out. Well, this is what Tolia did his last at bat. His first home run of the season, and it wasn't cheap, folks, on top of the batting cage in right field. And, you know, we talked about it. You remember that great play he made at first base? And I had mentioned something like sometimes a great defensive play can wake you up offensively. Yep. Could be a coincidence, or maybe not, as Nate Yeski's going out to the mound and going to have a pitching change here. So we'll step aside here at Jackie Robinson Stadium. Verberg coming out, new pitcher for Oregon State. 9-6 UCLA. Bruins up by three in the bottom of the seventh inning. A deciding game three on the line. Not too much breathing room against the defending national champions. And new pitcher coming in for Oregon State. We'll get to that in just a moment, but their upcoming schedule for UCLA. Well, looks like this. They'll face Arizona and LMU and just a couple of minutes away over at USC and then against Cal State Northridge. Yeah. Nice home schedule, never leaving Los Angeles. Yeah, well, you take a look at the midweek games here. LMU, CSUN, Long Beach State. You can go on and on. St. Mary's of the world and San Diego State, San Diego. There is no easy, no. easy out midweek games here on the West Coast. And the new pitcher for the Beavers is somebody we thought was coming in the game earlier, but it's Jake Mulholland. You see his numbers. I mean, he's been stellar his entire career for the Beavers. He's been their closer. He's been in the most tense situations that the Beavers have had in games the last couple years. But this is twofold. He's getting some work because this is a Sunday game. Normally he would come in when the Beavers were tied or leading, but this right now is number one to shut this possible rally, or not rally, but uh, run scoring opportunity for the Bruins, shut it down and get him some work. And he started off with Stronach with a leadoff single, cried they struck out, so there's one out, a runner on first for UCLA. And they also wanted to flip Michael Tolia around from the right side. Tolia climbs in. Mulholland, 6'2", 204 pounds out of Washington. Third team All-American last year. Went 2-2 two two with a 2.20 ERA. 31 relief appearances. Striking out 42 in 45 innings. Biggest difference maker in today's game. UCLA has been able to get their leadoff hitter on. Oregon State has not.
One one. Rick to left field. Meckler there. Two away. Yeah, but I, I will tell you this. It's totally a lefty yard. His first home run of the season. His last at bat. And what does he do? His next at bat from the right side hits one right on the button. Big time, great sign for the Bruins. That bat wakes up. Watch out, and it will. And he gets some high fives from his teammates on that. Of course, they understand who he is, and they understand he hit a ball right on the button. Here's McLean. One for three today, RBI single in the opening frame. It's the first strikeout from Verberg when he came in. And he's also grounded out to short. Stronic on breaking ball outside. Right down the pipe from Mulholland, one and one. When the Oregon State gets back to bat, it's going to be Malone, Fuchs, and Ober, five, six, and seven do up. Well, John Savage right now is number one, trying to get more runs on the board, and and concerned about six more outs that he's got to get. Popped up foul territory into the Beavers bullpen. That's what you're doing if you're a skipper right now. You're nursing a three-run lead. You're starting to count out. You got six more to go if you're John Savage. Nice crisp uniforms for UCLA today. Their starting pitcher gets to choose the uniform layout, and then the rest of the team has to follow suit. One, two, a little bit high, level count. What does a crisp uniform look like? Look at those pinstripes. It looks like that. That's okay. it. I'm just wondering if it's a question, that's all. Big breath from McLean. What do you call a dirty uniform? It's no longer crisp, is it? It can be crisp and dirty, right? McLean lofting at the upstairs pitch from Mulholland. They strand a runner on first. UCLA still with the lead, 9-6. Oregon State at the play when we come back. Business end of this game three between Oregon State and UCLA. We shift into the top of the eighth inning. UCLA out in front, 9-6. We've seen the bats come alive for the Beavers. Here's a look at the recent College World Series winners. Oregon State capturing that last year for their third title. Well, it, it, listen, forever you'll hear across the country uh, that it's SEC and then everybody else. But when you look right there, you see the Beavers won it last year. Arizona won it in 2012. Um, and then, you know, I think Coastal Carolina was a great great story and they had a great club I was fortunate to do their regional in North Carolina State uh, as we take a look at Kyle Mora and folks 14 appearances coming in this is his 15th of the year 15th 21 innings pitched to 0.86 ERA Malone the first batter he faces him back to the College World Series Oregon State has been in the College World Series five times. Well, you take a look at the leadoff hitters for Oregon State, 0 for 7. The Bruins, 4 for 8. And that's been the difference maker today. Two of those four times, the Bruins have capitalized. On the bat two times, they haven't. They have left runners on base.
Two out of Malone. Make it three and out. This might be concerning a little bit for John Savage. Last night when we saw Kyle come in, and, and normally he's got immaculate con command. Last night he didn't have command, and this looks very similar to last night. See the skipper, Savage, looking on. There's a strike for more, three and one. See Zach Petway sitting right next to John Savage right there. Winner of game one, pitcher, starting pitcher. Bruins pitching has shackled the bat of Malone 0 for 3 today. What is that? That's ball four. So for the first time today, the Beavers have their leadoff man aboard, and it's Tyler Malone. Brings up Greg Fuchs, the designated hitter in his freshman season. 486 hitter in high school, his senior year. Quiet today, 0 for 3, struck out, flied out, grounded out. Anybody thought that the Beavers were going to go away today quietly? Think again. You don't win three national championships in your program as winning many games as they have. And just shut it down late, chasing three on the road. And their first national title back in 1952. Then they had to wait 53 years for the next one. Since 2005, they've been at Omaha four times. We saw them come back last night in the 7 3 win. Chance for both teams to start off conference play on the right foot to take the series. It's up for grabs right now. One out of Fuchs in there for a strike. One one. Change up right there. You know, the Beavers are 7-2 and two when their opponents score first. They scored today first with two runs. I don't know what that makes them when they score first. Well, it just means numbers. they're playing a super club on the other side. That's all. Number one and number three going at it this weekend. Line drive in a center field. McLean plays it on one hop. <laughs> and there you go. Here we go. Here we go. Take a look at it. It's an off-speed pitch. It's it on, right on the nose, on the screws, right up the middle. That's Malone's 10th hit of the season. Or excuse me, Fuchs' fifth hit of the season. Now you have two on, no outs. Top of the eighth inning. And the tying run now at the plate with Ryan Ober. Ober singled in the second inning with a run scored off the bat of Joe Casey on the double. And since that second inning, he struck out twice. Third of the Beavers lineup over Mendezona and Casey. No outs. Two on. A one. Missing outside. One on one. Oregon State trailed three to one last night going into the seventh inning. Found a way to tie it up and then hit that gas pedal in the ninth. Taking on four more in the 7-3 win. They can come from behind. Have a good look in this inning. Moore checking second. Kicks 1-1. One, one, chopped out of play. Well, right now, there's six outs to go for the Bruins. Uh, assuming there's no double play, Adley Rutschman is going to come to the plate again as you take a look at Powell down in the UCLA bullpen. 
There's the sophomore out of Visalia, California. Now Powell has been the closer and it would not be surprising at all to bring in Powell for a two inning save or more than one inning. One two to Ober. Chasing and Morris strikes him out. Well, Moore is not a hard thrower. He's going to throw a lot of off-speed pitches and just change speeds. And you saw it right there. That's just a slow, slow, almost Ephus mm. breaking ball. Third time over is struck out tonight. One for four on the afternoon brings up George Mendezona. My favorite name in baseball so far. This is your favorite guy. Two on, one out. My favorite guy, favorite name. Favorite name, okay. Big difference. Do that same pitch again. And is on a one for three today. Singled in the second inning, struck out, lined out to left field. That was that diving play by Stronic in left. Tremendous play, folks. If you missed it, just, just go on the Pac-12 network and there'll be a replay. Or the Pac-12 now out. Yes. That should be a top 10 play for that other network. Although Tolia's play at first base is an underrated great play. One one to Mendezona. He goes around for strike two. Another great changeup. Here's the play we we're talking about that Stronic makes. Just watch this. We got a standing applause from Jackie Robinson Stadium and all the fans here. One, two. Fly ball to left field to Stronic. He's chasing this one down. Can he get to it? No. Just out of play. It was a long run for the left fielder. Well, it was. He's shading Mendezona in left center. Again, Normally, Jerry, Jeremy Iden is patrolling left field for the Bruins, but because of the busted finger, Stronach is out there. Just shows you the, the talent level that this Bruins roster has. Malone on second for Oregon State. There's a ground ball right side, fielded by Strumpf. Two away. That's what a good veteran will do. I mean, you don't know if Chase as a freshman might have opted to throw to second. Uh, but with a three run lead, he makes the right decision here. You can see that he just looks at second and says, you know, he thought better of it. Let me get the out at first. See Fuchs trying to. Well, you see, Ch watch Chase. He takes a look and he says, nah, let me get this for sure out here because we need outs right now. Now they need four. Four more outs. Bottom of Oregon State's lineup, Joe Casey, RBI double in the second inning, one for three today. Don't look now, folks. We have the tying run at the dish. <laughs> Just like that. Casey has a home run on the season. Two outs, two on. Malone on third, Fuchs on second. Moore uh, delivers. It's really hard for hitters to make that adjustment right off the bat because the pitchers that the Beavers have faced today have been all they had a, a plus fastball, but now you bring in Mora and everything he throws, it's off speed. 
everything he throws, even his fastball, is going to be 86, 87. So, it's, so far, it's been a tough adjustment. And he started off with a walk to Malone. Fuchs with a single. Ober struck out. Mendezona grounded to second. Putting runners on second and third. McInerney trying to frame that on the outside corner, but he can't get the strike call from Will Van Rapphorst behind home plate. Two and one. And you take a look at the Beavers offense. Now, granted, they had six runs on the board. They're only two for six with runners in scoring position. Trailing by three. Chopped out of play. That's a big at bat for Oregon State. Time running out. Down in this game three series split. Two runners in scoring position and a 2 2 count. Their nine hole hitter, Casey. Casey can run. What you don't want to do is a free pass right here and then have Heckler or Meckler, who's on deck, come up and hit a ball in the gap in the game's time. What? A risky throw over to third. Uh, Feeling the weight <laughs> of the situation is moral. I just let them go. Three balls, two strikes, two outs, and two on for Oregon State. Oregon State needs a hit. UCLA needs a strike. Ball four, bases loaded. what John Savage wants to do. He's got his closer in the pen ready. And Meckler coming up. That's the second walk from Kyle Mora. And now he will be facing the top of Oregon State's lineup. Wade Meckler. Runners on all three bags. Down by three. I thought you call them pillows. You know, call them pillows every time. I say pillows, it makes me tired. First pitch strike to the freshman. Eckler, a finance major at Oregon State. Smallest guy on the roster, five foot nine. But in a big situation here for the Beavers. Well, it's so difficult when you face Mora because as a hitter, you always think in your back of your mind, I, I cannot have a fastball, I can't miss a fastball, I can't miss a fastball. The problem is, is that Morris' fastball is, is more like a changeup. And then, and then, of course, everything else that he throws is slower than the changeup. Time running out for Oregon State. Three runners on, two outs, 0-2. Ground ball right side. Should be easy for Strump. Fielding over to first. And Kyle Mora eliminates the threat. Oregon State strands three. They're down by three. UCLA at the plate when we come back. Oregon State puts their leadoff hitter on in the top of the eighth inning. They were knocking on the door with the runners on all three bags. And a ground ball to Strump, 4-3 on the putout. Gets him out of the threat. And you'll see some appreciation from the Bruins dugout when Mora gets over there. They understand how big of an out that was. Nice going, nice going, thank you. 
He's not too happy. You see that? <laughs> it's like, it, and and rightly so. He loaded the bases up. Pitchers don't want a whole lot of talking either during the game. Right? No, I mean, it depends. Pitchers are different. I mean, they're a rare breed, man. Some will talk. Some don't want you near them. Eight, nine, and one for UCLA. Kendall, looking outside, one and one. I love watching Kendall hit against left-hand hitters. I mean, pitchers, I should say. He does not budge an inch. Two for three today. Two singles and a run scored. Ground ball, right side, blocked by McGarry. Picks it up and goes to the bag himself. Hit it right on the button. It's the only place on the field, first baseman. You don't have to make a, a great play. You don't have to catch everything. That's the only position on the field where you can literally block a ball with your chest, don't catch it, and you still have the opportunity to make an, get an out. I see so many guys that play first base now trying to play the left side of the ball or the right side of the ball a lot like they do on the other side of the diamond at third base, but it doesn't apply at first base. First base, all you got to do is knock the ball down, period. Is that your biggest tip for your kids that want to be a collegiate star at first, is just knock the ball down? Well, I, obviously you try to catch it, but if you don't move your feet, you, you catch a, a baseball with your feet. And what I mean by that, you move your feet to center the ball. And a lot of times you'll see in the big leagues now, guys on the corners are starting to play the ball to the side of them. Mm -hmm. And if you play the ball to the side of you at first base, where does it go? It goes, if you miss it, it ends up going to the outfield. If you center the ball and block the ball at first, if you don't catch it, then the ball comes off your chest and it's right in front of you. You pick it up and you throw it to your pitcher who's covering and you get an out. Three pitch hitter there, Jake Moberg, lining one out into right Malone. There for round number two, top of the lineup for the Bruins, Garrett Mitchell. And Mitchell started the game off with a double, a little bloop double into a shallow left field. Going with the Meckler, couldn't find it with the Sun, staring right into it. Since then, Mitchell with a strikeout, flat out twice to left and center. Fifth time through the Bruins lineup. Depending on what happens here with Mitchell, two outs, one one count. Oregon State down to their final three outs, but partner they got McGarry, Rutschman, and Phillip do up. Well, the beauty about this, if you're John Savage, is Rutschman is not the tying or go ahead run. And I imagine the Bruins will run out Holden Powell, who has closed the majority of the games for the Bruins so far this year. Mulholland kicks the 2-1, breaking ball in for strike two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. And the pitch, and it's hack foul. Well, in conference games since 2006, UCLA ranks second in wins overall. 217 overall wins. Guess who le leads Pac-12 play? Well, that would be the team he's playing. Oregon State, 229. Oregon State since 2006, 63% win percentage against Pac-12 teams. Popped up in the center field. KC closing in. Out number three. Three up, three down ending for Jake Mulholland. Oregon State down to their final three outs. McGarry, Rutschman, and Phillip coming up. So this is what's happened so far in today's game. Right off the bat in the first inning. 
McGarry leaves the yard, but not to be outdone by one of the best in the country, Adley Rutschman. Goes yard over the monster. Back-to-back -back home runs in the first inning. Oregon State producing two. UCLA coming back in the bottom, adding five runs, five to two. Beavs tack on another one, making it five to three. Right now trailing by three, and they have two, three, and four do up. Holden Powell's gonna step onto the rubber for UCLA. The sophomore out of Visalia, California, needs three more outs to get the series win today. Well, Holden's been the closer for the Bruins, a very, very hard thrower. His job right now is to get leadoff hitter. Most important hitter in the ninth inning is the first hitter. A couple of defensive changes, Jordan Prendes in left for Stronach, and behind home plate is Noah Cardenas, we saw the other night, and for Will McInerney. Stronach's probably saying, well, why would you take me out? Did you see that catch on me? Right. McGarry looks at one. Just outside. Just like that, we have a 2-0 count. <laughs> it's just... Well, McGarry is home run. Had a home run in his first appearance. Struck out, walked, and struck out his last appearance. Scored in the fifth on that from the two-run shot from Rutschman, who's on deck. And just like that, it's 3-0. This is a nightmare for head coaches. Ninth inning. You want your closer to get that leadoff hitter, get ahead. A sophomore Powell works out of the stretch with no one on. Three outs away for UCLA, and that pitch is inside. Four straight balls from the sophomore, and a leadoff walk for Alex McGarry. Well, here's the situation here. Let's see what the Bruins elect to do with Michael Tolley at first base. When you, you have a three-run lead right now, you just need outs. That's all you need, and they're going to put Tolia behind McGarry at first base. For me, I just put him as deep as I can over there because that run McGarry means nothing all. And where Tolia is right now is, is virtually no man's land. There he goes. And you pitch to Rutschman. They must have heard me, see? And now he's deep. Not sure I'd be that close to the line. Rutschman three for four today. A solo home run to start the afternoon, and then a two-run shot in the fifth inning. RBI single was last at bat, scoring Meckler. Just the best game in the world, isn't it? I mean, it, it, it really is. When you think about all the things that are going on here, you got Holden Powell on the mound. He's a sophomore. He's got a great arm, and he's had great success. But a lot of the things that these kids are thinking about are not what skippers are thinking about and what managers are thinking about. Managers are thinking about we got a three run lead. Even if Rutschman hits a home run here, we still have a one one run lead. But they're not thinking that way. They're trying to not give in to Rutschman right here. And giving in would be to walk him well, or to pitch to him. Well, consequently, I mean, you saw a good fastball there right down the middle, but they're still in their mind. They understand that Rutschman can hurt them, but you know who really can what really can hurt them is that if they pitch around Rutschman because now the tying run is on deck. That would be Bo Phillip who's due up next. 1-1. One, one. Breaking ball. Nice drop on that from Powell. 1-2 and two to the dangerous Rutschman. Well, the majority of the offense has come from McGarry and Rutschman. Pops this up into the stands. Souvenir. Right next to our camera guy. Well, he just missed that pitch. I know it's a foul ball down the, the, first, the third base line. That's an off-speed pitch that he just missed hitting into orbit. Just missing our camera guy, Kenny. All our cameramen to do doing a fantastic job at Pac-12 Networks and our crew. 
Uh, I tell you what, the, the best in the business. And I, I've been around the block a few times, and Pac-12 has the best in the business. 1-2 to Rutch. Fouls this one away again. As a do you think he has a better read on pitches? No. No. No, because I will tell you, there's been a bunch of great catchers that couldn't hit at all. Powell was trying to hit the outside corner. Two and two. And, and I will tell you this, that's a ball. But home plate umpires, they, they know hitters, and they know good hitters, and they know the hitters that aren't so good. And because of that, the better hitters will get more respect when it comes to borderline pitches that they take. McGarry on first, started the inning off with a walk. Powell goes same location, misses both times, three and two. Well, look at Powell, he is really, really frustrating. I mean, if you had time to run out there to the mound and just calm him down, I would be doing that right now. He wanted the last two pitches. They're on the outside part, folks. They're going around the plate, and they are balls. Trying to keep it outside of Rutschman's wheelhouse. Ground ball, left side, sharply hit past Kreidler in the left field. <laughs> Rutschman four for five today. Well, I, I tell you what, there's so many intangibles we've talked about Rutschman. Now keep in mind, this is a guy who's hit a ball over the monster and he's hit a ball, a rocket to right field. He understands the game. We heard his head coach, Pat Bailey, talk about the intangibles. He's a good kid. He's a student of baseball. He understood that all he was trying to do there is get on base with two strikes. And that's what he does. He takes a breaking ball and hits it the other way. So now the tying run at the plate with both Phillip. Beavers with two on, no out. Top of the ninth, trailing nine to six. They won last night seven to three, lost Friday evening, eight to nothing. Conference on the line this afternoon. This ball's going to skip between the legs of Cardenas. Kind of ping-pongs around, and McGarry's going to land on third. Runners now on first and third. Go, go. It just goes right through the wickets. It's the toughest pitch in the world to block. It's a fastball. Off of Bill, Will Van Rapport's right ankle there. Actually, I'm mistaken. That was a breaking pitch. But again, if you're the Bruins right now, you have to understand if you're playing defense, you have a three-run lead. So the runner at third, not important. Runner at first, not important. What's important right now is the first out. Popped up into right field. Garrett Mitchell cruising towards the foul line. Glass is down. There's out number one. Tagging from third is McGarry, and he will score. Cut the lead by two on the sack fly from Bo Phillip. Two run ball game on a sunny, sunny Sunday afternoon. Scorcher. Here's Malone. 0 for 3 with a walk. Rutschman on first. Oregon State down to their final two outs of the series, trying to keep things alive. Well, the Bruins in no double. Michael Tolia is just hugging the line at first base. And on the other side, Kreidler, it's just off the line, but. Opens up some holes in that 3-4 hole for this left-hand hitter, Malone. Still looking for his first hit this afternoon. A one. Right up the middle, little hopper going to the bag in time, and the throw over. Not there on either. That was
was Kevin Kendall trying to make a double play and can't get either out, so two on and one out. Well, we're going to take a look at this. It's a ball hit right up the middle. It's a chopper, and he doesn't it's beat him. There. It's just in no man's. I mean, you got to make a decision right off the bat. Right there. Are you going to try to go to the bag, or are you going to try to go to first? And again, what did we talk about? You see how much time he had right there? He almost got the back end of the double play. If Kendall just makes the, gets the out at first base, that's all he needed to do. But again, he's a sophomore, and these are the little things that you will think about prior to a ball being hit. And now you're in a situation where a double ties this game up potentially. So Malone safe on the fielder's choice. Brings up Fuchs, two on, one out, top of the ninth. Go ahead, run at the play now with Fuchs. Tying run on first with Malone. Preston Jones is going to pinch run on first. Here's a one hopper to third. And there's out number two. Wow. I guarantee you, here comes Bale, Bailey out of the dugout. And he's running. Looks angry. He's going to argue his case. Well, he doesn't like that call right there. And I mean, Phillip was getting down that from the line from first. We're going to get a look at it. Let's see. Kreidler gets rid of it in a hurry. Boy, that's close. Bang, bang. That is close. That is close. So Rutschman on third, two out. Ober at the plate. And a pinch runner coming in for Greg Fuchs on first. And in comes Kyler McMahon. First and third, two out. Oregon State down to their final out. They trail by two, tying run on first go ahead run at the plate with Ober. Seven hits on the season for the sophomore. First pitch. Oh, he's swinging away down the third baseline. Strike one. Well, what, isn't this fitting? Two of the best teams in the country. Beautiful, beautiful Sunday afternoon. It's no longer blazing here, as you mentioned. I said scorching. Or scorching. It's been riding me for five minutes about it. But in my opinion, the winner of this game will be the new number one team in the country. With Vanderbilt getting beat in a series by Texas A&M. Oh, one popped up. This could do it. Colia trying to track it out of room. Strike two. Beavers down to their final strike. Well, Bruin fans on their feet. Rutschman on third. McMahon on first. Two outs. 0-2 count to Ryan Elber. Chance to put away the series. 0-2. Good block by Cardenas. Well, there's something to think about here. Don't forget McMahon at first base. He's a pinch runner. He can run, right? Obviously, he can run a stolen base, and then the tying runs in, in scoring position. And you know Powell's got that breaking ball that he's been throwing in the dirt quite a bit. So that's the other part of this inning.
One, two. Swing and a miss. UCLA wins the series. Well, some big time baseball by two big time programs and it was a treat this weekend for all the fans here in, at Jackie Robinson Stadium. I mean, it, it, it was a pitcher's treat for the Bruins on Friday night when they shut out the Beavers. You see the strike three on the off-speed pitch from Powell. But, but uh, and then last night, of course, the Beavers came back and got the W. But today, the Bruins at home take the series. So UCLA opening night, 8-0 in the shutout.